Hello and welcome to episode 219 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, a place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, creator of the Red Mask from Mars, and joining me this week are the creator of Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. The writer behind Cockney Kung Fu, and another title we'll probably be mentioning later on in this particular episode, it's Tony Esmond. Hello Vincenzo. Hello. You all, whenever you send me mail through the post, that you always put that. On uh, the... I sent a letter to a package to Dan this week, and I put guns on it as well. Yeah, at least. Yeah. I get uh, grief off the misses for all the names that come through on the different. Packages. <laughs> really? Every everyone that sends me something in the post, like comic related, it's always why something. You, but why are you getting grief for it though? Or, or you I mean she's joining in and just bullying you? I just think like uh, I don't know. I don't know. Have to have to ask her. Yeah. Oh, there's let's a few. The show. Yeah, let's get yeah. her on the show. That'd be good. Why does that frustrate her? <laughs> I think she's a bit concerned that so many weird people know where I live. <laughs> to, to be fair, it's a valid concern. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Um, but yeah, she's not on this week's show. But we do have a guest. Yes, yes, and joining us yes. for the whole show this time, we're, this week we're joined by a publisher, digital comics app sort of creator, and quite possibly the most patient sponsor a silly little <laughs> podcast could ask for. It's the man behind Comic House, Pete Jeanpaul. Hello, sir. Good evening. How are you, gentlemen? Good, thanks. Good. We are well. Back, mate. We had to Ta- up with the lucky for about 20 minutes, so yeah. well done. Time to be highbrow. <laughs> You see, pit. I've done these podcasts a lot, can you? I said good evening when people good, are probably going to be listening to it in the morning. Good evening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pete, I've ruined the illusion already. Pete Jean Paul, the Alfred Hitchcock of comics. No, that's probably not the best. <laughs> good evening. Um, yes, Pete's um, joining us this week, and he's going to be here for the whole show um, because it's our last part of the comic making process. This journey we've been on for the past six weeks now. Um, yeah, and we're we're talking about digital coming up, mm. um, which is a pro. You know, we talked about printing last week, and we've talked about all you know the different stages leading up to it. Um, if we didn't talk about digital comics, it would be frankly ridiculous. So we're going to get stuck that's, into that in, that's in a minute. The future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they say. No, would you know what is the future though? Comic house. It is indeed comic house. Yeah, um, he's, the he's got a front row seat. <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm nervous now because normally i say something rude or ridiculous right at this moment yeah yeah but like, luckily we're not on video so i can't see him no. scowling at me yeah no. <laughs> he's just gonna be like <laughs> nero playing the violin while rome burns around him <laughs> yes comic comic house are our sponsor thank you very much pete but um yes as we say um they're the indie comic marketplace with a difference and we love them and uh yeah, yeah we're gonna be talking more about their app very soon um, amongst the others, but you can just self-publish your books, list them on there for free, start selling straight away. This is mm. brilliant because Tony's keeping really quiet because we've um, actually yeah. got the sponsor on the show. Sorry. This is amazing. Do you want to come on every week, Pete? That would, that, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my profile on there today. Really? Yeah, I filled it out. Nice. Yeah, oh, it says good. my hips do lie. That's yeah. all it says. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that is, that is your say. bio, isn't it? Yeah. For... Yeah, no, normally it's my hips don't lie, but they do now, don't they? Let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> they don't help you out as much as they used to. No, I'm getting um, old. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're a creator on the Comic House app, the Digital Comics app, um, do fill in your profile. That's something that you're, you're um, pushing, isn't it, Pete? Really keen to do it, yeah, because I think the more people that do it, um, if people are reading a comic book and they want to find out more about the creators, then they can just click on the links, find your Twitter see what you look like and your biog and all that sort of stuff. And I just think it's really important. Yeah. Um, we've got this massive database of things that you can just add creators to and then they can all claim them. And uh, I just think it looks nicer on the app when you can actually see the creators and see what they've been up to and link in all their previous books as well. So um, yeah. yeah, I think it really helps because with the indie comics as well, when you um, probably more than a lot of the mainstream, I would say, with, with small press and independent comics, if you suddenly find a, a creator just out of the blue that is like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever, you will look for that name in, in other things that they've done. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes with the mainstream, there's so much, you know, and sometimes a lot of it can be very similar, but I don't follow like mainstream creators as much as I do, but with like small press, I'm always on, on the lookout for what they've done before or. Mm. Yeah, I'm exactly next. the same. I'm exactly the same. And I think it's it's quite an easy thing to do. You just find your name on the on the Comic House site and then click on claim my profile and 
you'll be you'll be asked to put in something like who you are, just so I know that it's not some randomer trying to claim your profile. And then you can just access it in your dashboard and just add your profile picture and Twitter links and contact details and all that sort of stuff. So it's um, it's quite a handy. Um, we've made the site. I mean, to be honest with you, all websites where you've got to submit someone are a bit of a pain in the ass because it's a big database sort of thing and it yeah. needs to be done correctly. But um, this is hopefully quite an easy one to use. And if I'm, we can get all the creators adding their their information on there, it's just going to look so much nicer on the app when people are reading the books. Yes. Nice. So all, the, cool. all those creators out there listening, you know, get involved and get stuck in do it and do it. Um, because there's loads of titles on there at the moment. Dan, what, what's currently on there? This week's new featured editions, we've got uh, Megatomic Battle Rabbit 4, Awesome Comics Issue 4, yes. Digitopia 1, Displaced Dreams cool. 1, Andrew Saw's Graphic Novel, Hello to Jason Isaacs, and But I'm a Cat Person, Volume 5. Uh, Read these and volume hundreds five. more. Bloody hell. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've heard of that, um, I'm a Cat Person. Sorry, you but... surprise me, because and you are a Cat Person. I, I am. <laughs> I am very, very much so. Um... <laughs> Definitely check out Awesome Comics Four. There's, oh uh, yeah, it's that's total nepotism. nepotism I mean, but, the, yeah. t- the titles in the name, you know, it says it all because um, yeah. this is the Awesome Comics podcast, and well, we made an awesome comic. <laughs> There's four issues yeah, of it, and we're doing another one. We were talking about it earlier. Mm. Yeah, yeah, oh, next. yeah. There, there's there's plans to do something. early days, early days. Yeah, something a bit special, but we have got something yeah. in the works. Um, yeah. Long time listeners, I'm going to announce that. the name a bit later. No, you're not, because we don't have a name for it. When you say we talked about it before, and we just yeah. it, that was like five seconds of well, this is going well. <laughs> yeah, that's all we need. We're is so it? in sync. Yeah, We're like in sync. Oh god, in sync. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, and we dance like them, synchronized. Oh, um, we're doing our special. Hey, all oh, right, I remembered this the other day. I completely forgot about it, but you've promised to do a dance for a lady on our podcast, and you've never done it. <laughs> Oh, God. That was a nice silence, yeah. wasn't it? That was a that dead air there. Guilty silence there, yeah. Vincenzo. Well, I can't remember why. You were on, was it, whose podcast was it you on? You were on that Stacey. 24 hours. Was, Stacey, it the pop, was it the Pop Culture Parlour? Was, wasn't it? That's it, yeah, you said yeah. you'd do a dance for it. I think we need to know the background on this. I, I know, yeah, I, th- I think it was, I, I, I think it was, um, just a dance in general, and I can't remember why. I think we're talking was about it God. Thing, I think. I if think you hit so we, many or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yes, that's what it was. Mm. Yeah, it was like the 24 hour podcast or something like that. I but you're glad I bought that up, aren't you? Yeah. Not, not really, but then again, <laughs> then again, <laughs> with the Another volumes and volumes of, of audio I have on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> true. On you both. <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah, one I'm, day. You haven't got enough to make me do the dance yet, but it's close. Yeah, close. Place. Yeah, I, there, there's not enough uh, sort of content on there um, to rival Comic House, who uh, are brilliant <laughs> and uh, for, for only three pounds a Nicely month. Done. Yeah, oh, you get access to the app and shit. loads of digital comics, which we're going to talk about very soon, actually. So, yes. um, yeah, go to comichouse.com, find out more about the service and about our great sponsor. And, yes. you know, he watched it go completely off the rails for a good. I mean, that, we might have the longest sponsorship ads ever. Because sometimes it turns into a I ten minute conversation. The sometimes you have to pull us out. I forget we're still on them. Yeah, yeah. Because I do think I haven't even said the URL yet. <laughs> it's like, well, I was in the shops today, and they only had salt and vinegar. I was like, okay, hang on, calm down. We got to do the. <laughs> I like salt and vinegar. I know you do. You've got something to tell us, haven't you, Tony? Talk about your. Uh, you've been day tripping. Uh, oh so, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've done the advert because I don't mind talking about it. I just want to yeah. make sure that Vince is okay. Yes, we've done, yeah, we've done the ad now. Sorry, Pete. Oh, okay. <laughs> that went oh, well, Pete. Right. That was yeah. one of the better ones, mate. I'm, yeah. I'm proud Box of us. Ticked. Advert yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting we're doing a podcast. It's just nice just having a chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually where we come on stuck. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but Tony, um, I can't remember. Did we record early last week or did we not? Yeah, we did, didn't we? We did, yeah. Um, when we recorded early, the Saturday leading up to um, the episode Something. going live. Now, oh, was it Sunday? Was it you did? Yeah, it Sunday. Sunday. Ah, yeah, the, the Sunday. Um, Tony was at. Is it Hackney Comic and Zine Fair? The first it one. Was. I'm, I'm going to say Sundays might be a thing now. Mm. There's a there's a there's a, always been a thing, Tony. on a Saturday to go to an event, isn't there? Yeah. Sunday, you're more chilled out, aren't you? You're more likely to wander into town to go to something. I think. Yeah. So, and we've talked a bit about the one day events the way forward, haven't we? We've mentioned that a lot of events don't have enough for two days, do they? 
No. Yeah. No, I think the two three day ones kind of it's a bit of a bit of a ball like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So um I and uh, to be fair, it was a zine fair around the corner from the Nobra offices. So we had a chat, we said, Oh well, let's just we just fancy doing it for fun. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And me and Sam and Sam's son, Louis, pushed the trolleys from the office round to the venue. Two trolleys we pushed around because it was um also Hackney Carnival. Um, okay. which is going on outside. I don't think the crowds for the carnival and the comic fair are um, the same. No. <laughs> no. There was far too many thongs for my taste. I'm not a prude. You what? know me. At, at, the, at the zine fair? Yeah. Yeah. Me and, oh, you know, me and a couple of the others. Me and Gareth Hopkins were in thongs. Not you could see. But no, oh, but I, as, I walk, as I walked home... <laughs> what? As Go I walked on. home... <laughs> have, uh, have you seen that film Sexy Beast? <laughs> oh, that's me all over in it. <laughs> bah, bah, nah. and a, and oh, nah, nah. Yeah. The um, as I walked back because I had to walk through the main bit of the carnival and it was kind of over, so everyone was sort of hanging about and smoking. Let me just say this as a sort of pro, you know, sort of a fifty-year-old white conservative, not Tory, but like a normal kind of man. There was a lot of weed. I yeah. think I was high just walking through it. Anyone wants to test my piss now, I'll probably come up how I do. You know what I mean? Uh, um, and there was, but beyond like a lot of weed peeing in the street, quite good music, and there was an awful lot of butt cheeks on show, which I don't mind normally. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of thongs, a lot of that going on. That's all right. I don't mind it too much. So, what did the comic crowd look like compared to that? I'm more assuming. sort of hipstery kind of yeah, people. Fair enough. You know, more sort of uh, quiet ish, you know. But I'll tell you what, we, we were pushing the trolleys round. Mm. and we sort of pushed through the crowd of people who were there for the carnival who was super nice like literally super nice and they'll help us up on the pavement with the trolleys because they're quite heavy and um so i was setting up and i was chatting to my next one over i'll talk about in a minute and um so i saw some bloke come in and he was wearing one of those sort of headdresses you know like you see at notting hill carnival like the biggest sort of elaborate feather headdresses and a pair of shorts and um i think he'd brought in the box that we dropped a box off our trolley and someone had brought in this box and said, oh, have you dropped this off your trolley? And went, oh, yeah, thanks. That's quite nice. Well, dude, yeah. yeah. yeah That's yeah. a lot of stock. Yeah. I mean, it's like 10 books of skip, which is uh, a few quid's worth, you know. Um, yeah. So it was mobbed. It was, I put some pictures online. It was just packed all day long. We had Luke Healy, who's just done Americana, um, turn up and he did a signing. We pretty much sold out of his stuff. We sold out of quite a few books. Um, everyone was suited down to Joe Stone, really. Joe Stone, a couple of people who organised it. It was just lovely. It was a lovely event, really busy. Like people would come up and go, "Oh, tell me about this book," and "Oh, I'd like that." And it was like that sort of thing. Um, big shout out to the No Brow Massive who were there with me and at the table. Uh, Sam, Louis, uh, Ayula, Ivana, Emily. There was a few of us there, and we had an absolute blast. Really nice. And my next door neighbour was um, the always magnificent Elizabeth Queerstrit. Um, who gave me uh, sent me a copy of Too Serious to Sleep, which is a collection of funny and insightful drawings of hers. Um, we interviewed Elizabeth on the pod before. I think we did it at True Believers, didn't we? Mm. Um, if you remember, um, yeah. she's got I, I, I love her stuff. It's it's just quirky and funny, and she's got a great sense of humour. And she spent the day knitting. And then every time she wanted to ask me a question, she put her hand in the air, which maybe did make me chuckle. Um, <laughs> So go to Q-U-E-R-S-T-R-E-T, Quirstrit.co.uk, and you can see some of it. She's got a great little web comic, which I often mention at the end of the year, sort of roundup. But uh, I would reckon it was a curated event. So I think the, you had to apply your approach to stuff like that for the event. But um, I've already spoke to Joe, and he says he's gonna, definitely going to do it next year again. Oh, right. nice. Uh, oh, great. You, just, you were, we were talking to people like nonstop all the time. Handed out loads of um, awesome comics, podcasts, postcards to people and stuff as well. Nice. And quite a few listeners, Zach, from, who's a listener, he came down. Loads of people, in fact. Um, the Avery Hill Boys. You know, it was a good, good laugh. Yeah, Catriona Chapman, who I only literally sort of waved at across the room because we were so busy, you know. Mm. But yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend it to anyone next year. I'm hoping it's going to grow, but it was in the um, London Fields Brewery, which is two rooms. I think one's like one of these sort of where people go and listen to music. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Um, and it was that sort of with a, um, a bar along one side and everyone was drinking beer. But, you know, it's like we've said this before, you know, if it's like if you're at Leamington or Nottingham or someone and someone comes to the table, you know, glugging a pint of lager, you think, oh, here we go. But there it was quite normal. I think Simon Simon Russell came down and he was, he was on his second pint, which I accused him of being on his fifth pint. But, uh, 
it's good. Well, let's hope. I mean, it's it's good to know that this, this event was well attended, and let, let's hope like events like this just sort of get bigger and better. Um, we we go through that little yeah. emotional peak and trough, don't we? We think, yeah. oh no, nobody's attending conventions, and you go to something like that, and it's like mobbed down. You think, oh good, brilliant. Let's carry on. You know, it's like that. Yeah, I'm glad because we've kind of not had the best year, have we? But yeah, yeah, I think you're right, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've got high hopes for the rest of the year. We got a few events yes. coming up. Yeah, um, we've got high hopes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, certainly, uh, certainly this year's going to be an interesting discussion when we get to our end of year show. Yeah, it will be, won't it? Yeah. The, I, th- I think the landscape's changed a bit this year. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's it's shifted a little. You yeah. know. And we haven't yes. made any plans when it comes to the end of year show yet. So no, we usually yeah. leave that till one week before the end of the year show. Yeah, like, yes. What the hell are we going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> and and well, we I think we run I massively over time. I think we're going to have to do another quiz because that went down quite quite well last year. So maybe around Christmas yeah. we we'll do another quiz show. That was quite fun, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be yeah. good. Yeah, well, it was a good laugh. It was. Yeah, we could uh, go up what? against the comic smell boys. Ah, oh, yeah, oh. they're good lads. Ooh. Seeing them on Friday. Yeah. I'm seeing them at B&A in Dundee on Friday, so I'm looking forward to that. Ooh. I've never met David, so I'm hoping David Robertson's going to be there as well. That will be good. Let's make something yeah. happen. Yeah. Anyway, we always make the fun happen every week on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought, just lean into it. Just yeah. <laughs> Go with it. Go with it. Turn yeah. into the skid. Yeah. And uh, like, like we said earlier, um, past few weeks we've been talking about the comic making process. And... Uh, yeah, so we started with writing, went on to artwork, then colouring, lettering, um, editing, then printing. So basically, something for everyone, really. Mm. And f- thank you to everyone that's been uh, following the shows, um, be you new listeners, old listeners, or alike. Um, we've appreciated the feedback. And uh, and to be honest, there weren't going to be this many editions. There weren't no, gonna we were going to do four, weren't we, at the start? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So... Um, yeah, we just added a couple more. One of which is yeah. this week's, which yeah. we've never properly had a no brainer. We we've never done, had a, like a focused discussion about digital comics, um, which is crazy when you think about the amount of times we're talking about what we've read on Comicsology, Comic House, Sequential, or where you know wherever we found books. I can... think I'm literally about fifty fifty physical and um, digital at this point, and I'm a luddite. You know me. Yeah. yeah. So which is yeah, interesting because when we started, you you really weren't. You... I didn't even have a Comixology account when we yeah. started. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think that's a perfect barometer of how to judge it. Yeah. Digital comics are now um, bigger than ever. Um, whether that, I mean, that's not to say it's it's the most popular medium ever. You know, comics are getting bigger and better. But um, the big availability of comics these days is wider, it. than, it, yeah. it's wider than it's ever been. Yeah. Um, you know whether some people may grumble about this, that, or the other. If you look at it on paper, if you want to read a comic, any comic, there's a good chance you'll be able to find it digitally. Mm. Um, yeah. Apart from what I'm going to uh, recommend later in the show, but I'll, 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 I'll get to that later. <laughs> you can finish a comic and have people reading it on yeah that day yeah with digital yeah that is great isn't it yeah. Um, Digital over the has has changed the comic landscape, but has it been for good? Has it been for bad? You know, um, what what has what have been the peaks and the troughs? Um, that's what we're going to be discussing about this week. And especially if you're making comics, because this is about the comic making process. If you're making comics, what are your digital options? You know, if you want to just get your comic out there, like Dan says, if you've made your comic um, and you just want it to be in people's hands straight away. It will probably only take you an hour or so if you if you prepped you know if you. I mean, I don't know whether you if you've got a bit of a following. Yeah. If you've got no following whatsoever, that might be a bit more challenging. Yeah, yeah. which is something we'll yeah. discuss as well. I, th- I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what's I, th- I think if we start this off with, and I, I think Tony, Tony's um, said it first, like how many comics are we reading digitally as comic fans, the the, the people that we talk that are on this show now, um, how many. What's the percentage of your comic reading, physical to digital? Now, Tony, you said about 50-50. Do you yeah, think? I think it's because recently I've been away a lot. So, for example, this week I was in a hotel three nights. and uh, Next week I'm the same. So I've got an iPad and I read Comic House, Comicsology, and um, a couple, maybe a couple of other ones. Mm-hmm. Obviously, first Comic House is my first go-to. Um, Love you. But the... <laughs> 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 but I, I, at the moment, I reckon 50-50. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. 
Um, right, so Tony's about 50%. Uh, what about you, Dan? Mine's easily 90% digital. Really? Ah. Yeah, there's a lot more digital. But I'll read something digital and then want the if I've really enjoyed it, I want the hard copy. Like, I'll start reading yeah. those X-Men and I thought, I want, I've stopped buying them digitally because I want the hard copy. Mm, and I want right. that experience of getting it in the trade and then reading it all through. I occasionally read hit. stuff, and the X-Men's a good example of that, is where I can't wait for the day or two to get to the comic shop. Mm. Like we're mostly because we're talking about it. Mostly yeah. because one of us will go, "Oh, have you read this? Fucking hell!" And then I'll download it straight away. But I'll also, it's also on the pool list. You know, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of it's like I read on like even web comicsology or comic house read stuff, and then all yeah. stuff we get submitted as well, guys. I yeah, loads of that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say I'm I'm the same as as Dan, but um, Pete, what what's what's yours? It's about it's I'm the same as Dan. I think it's about ninety percent digital stuff. Right. I think for me, the whole reason behind Comic House was because um, I saw how Spotify had start when Spotify started, and everyone was like, "What? Well, this is shit. Why would anyone go to a go to Spotify and listen to stuff for free? Do you know what I mean? Well, essentially, yeah. you can listen to yeah. stuff for free. It's going to kill the industry. It's it's um it's an awful idea, but it's it's revolutionised how we listen to music. And I yeah. found running a I run a record label. That's my day job. I found that it's it's helping people discover music, and they will still buy the vinyl copies. Yeah, especially C- vinyl, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so much yeah. now. CDs are falling off a cliff a bit, but people still want to to buy vinyl, and they'll mm. discover their next favorite band, and they'll buy the vinyl for it. And we wanted to replicate that with Comic House um, and allow people to discover the comics, and then hopefully go and buy the print copy. So we want it to. I don't see it as a competitor to the the physical print side of things. No. I see it as a as a complement to it. Mm. Where you can actually, as you say, Dan, you can read the X Men and then just you want to have. Let's face it, all of us are, are hoarders, aren't we? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. You're not wrong. Yeah. I mean, so it's we're never going to stop buying the print copies of things, but it's given us the opportunity to perhaps be a bit more sensible and buy. <clears> the yeah. which we know we're, we've read already, and we know we love, and we we want to have that that copy of it on the shelf at home. Yeah. So. I've, I've, uh... I was, I've made peace with that part of me that wants to own every single thing that I read. Yeah. And now I've sort of with digital, I've realised I can read this, enjoy it for what it is, and just leave it. I don't need to have everything. I can't have everything. No. Yeah. Just, yeah. You can have whatever I, you want, Dan. What would you like? I, I can't afford all the books. I haven't got all the room to store them all. <laughs> it's just, there'd be so many. As, yeah. uh, but like I can pick that, cherry pick that stuff that really, really, really works. Yeah. And enjoy that. I can I'll no, keep I, that. I think that... Um... What Pete said, like that comparison to the like bands and like Spotify and music, is quite interesting as well. Um, for instance, with my musical, t- I mean, I, I listen to Spotify. I use Spotify. Yeah, I, yeah, I, me I, too. I, I like yeah. discovering like new bands and stuff. And if I discover them, I'll certainly look for when they're when they've got gigs in the area. You know, I'll, I'll try and discover yeah, when they're true. playing live. And then when yeah. you go see them live, you probably go pick up a bit of merch, or you'll pick up yeah. a CD while you're there. You're going to support something. And in some ways, comics digital comics can do a similar sort of thing um sometimes you'll, you'll read it you know on your ipad or your kindle or whatever and you go to a comic convention and you see the person uh, uh, you know face to face you'll probably go walk away from the table with something that you've bought mm. you know if I've, you're had, a fan I've had people coming up to me at cons and say i've just sold a copy of this particular issue of my comic book because they'd read it on the on the comic house app and that yeah, makes good. it so That's brilliant right mm. for me yeah. yeah. What What do you think the connection is? And because comics are a personal reading experience, aren't they? They're a lone reading experience. And to hold a bit of paper in your hand, do you think that the, from your point of view, Pete, do you think the reading experience is different when you read it on a, a lot of people read it on a phone screen, don't they, or on a, a tablet yeah. screen? Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you I think mean, it connects in a different way or in a, a similar way? Or I I don't think. I mean, Comic House is is my baby. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, but yeah. I still love to hold a comic book in my hand. I just yeah. think it's the convenience of having it on your tablet, all loaded up with your favourite comics to read on the train or when you're in a yeah. kind of got time. To, I think the, the problem we've all got is there's not enough time. We've, yeah. None of us have got enough time. I mean, I'm finding now that I can't finish some Netflix series because back in the day I would have had I would have sat through the whole series and thought I need to watch all of this and complete the set and watch it all. Yeah. I, I, stop watching a film if i thought it was shit but now time is so important to me that 
if I'm watching Jessica Jones on Netflix and I'm thinking, oh, I can't be asked for this anymore. I, I won't be asked with that anymore and I'll stop. And I, like Dan, I've come to terms with that aspect of my life where I don't have to watch a whole series now. And and also previously, a lot of that watching would have been done on DVD or video previous yeah. to that. And you would have had a financial um, investment in buying those exactly. DVDs. Yeah. But these days with a streaming thing, you're thinking, well, I'm paying that anyway every month. I can just look at something else. It will still be there. I can mm. always go back to it. Yeah, is that, isn't there? Yeah. It's yeah, exactly. so much as well now. Like with digital, you kind of unlocked the whole world of comics every creator in the world is putting their work digitally so like if you there's, yeah. i don't really have time for crappy comics if it's not grabbing me yeah i'm not saying they're crap just move on it may, yeah, I mean, yeah just move be. on yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Thing that you your sensibilities. something that is your thing so yeah. yeah but tony tony i think the i think the reading experience is obviously for me different right because i like to read a comic book in my hand but the convenience of having it digitally for me yeah and to find all these new books which i wouldn't have perhaps come across is yeah. is really important for me so. I, I think there's a there's a weird change there's a shift and i was uh, the reason i say this is people look at everything now on their phones don't they mm. i mean ha- unless you're working on a desktop how often do you turn it on you know and the the stuff that people are looking at on their phones and their tablets tends to be stuff like social media and twitter and um, facebook and Instagram, which has a really personal element to it. So you are looking, it's almost an element of your personality these days. Yeah. So when you're looking at a comic on the same device that you look at these very personal moments often, it, it, it has a certain familiarity and you feel a certain ownership over a comic. It's different from the old days when we used to buy a comic and the news agents roll it up, put it in our back pocket and cycle home. It's, 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 I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying it's a different personal thing. You know, it's uh, I think it's a strange thing like that. Following on from that, one of the reasons yeah. those like three panel gag strips have done so well yeah. is because it's like you've been told a joke, and by sharing that onto your followers, friends, or whatever, it's like you're retelling that joke for them, but you're also claiming part ownership of it because you're the one that shared yeah. it on. Do you, Do you think, think it's entering the realm of the pub, the pub conversation, where you know we used to talk to people in the pub, and now we talk to people online? I think comics, certain comics, are part of that now yeah. as well. You know. Like, say you share something quite like uh, mean spirit or kind of nihilist or a bit down or, or something about depression you laugh about it and people can relate and you yeah. you connect that way through through the sharing of these these comics it's where kind of the long form comics uh, still find finding purchase in that for me where those three panel gag strips are like going fucking yeah. gangbusters uh, I think I think as well I think a good comic um, draws you in and makes you feel part of the conversation, I mean, mm. which is why people love stuff like the X-Men because it's the outsider comic, you know, there's yeah. an element of family about it. And when you're reading it on a device where you're normally reading emails or messages that come into you from your mum or your friends or something, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange conjoining of the two things. Almost, yeah, you're right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, think, it's, I think you still have a personal, even if you're reading comics a hundred percent digitally, um, yeah. I think you can still feel a personal investment and a, Oh, um, completely. That you're, yeah. that you're supporting that comic book. Do you know what I mean? And that creator, because you're obviously, if you read a comic book, it's tagged somewhere that it's read, and it goes up the chart of that particular um, app or device or whatever. And I think it's you still feel ownership, and that that's the great thing for me about music is buying music or listening to music. You feel like you're part of the band, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The same way that yeah, people who support football teams and stuff feel. They say exactly. we won this weekend and all that sort of stuff. Everyone needs to feel ownership of something, and I just think it's um... a sense of belonging as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping that this, since we started this whole comic house thing, I, I like to think there's a, a little community is has built up around it of all the creators that are involved in Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. And have I think you're right. In it and stuff, and it's 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 nice to when you go to cons to bump into them all and see meet meet them for the first time or meet them for the third or fourth time or whatever and just. It does feel there's a really nice groundswell of. I'm not saying Comic Coast is responsible, but it feels like there's a nice indie kind of gang running around in this yeah, definitely. crazy mm. place, just releasing some really quality comic books. And that's how you start a movement. That's how you start a popularity is by the sort of. There's not an underground, but there's a certain subculture element to it. And, we're, you know, there's a sense of belonging and people feeling inclusive and people will join it and create stuff. And, you know, it's, it's a burgeoning mm. um, area of art, isn't it? That's that's yeah. how stuff yeah. starts, you know? I mean, there's yeah. no bar to entry either. 
the whole comic no, okay. team came to, was ripped off the Bauhaus movement because we wanted to make a movement for the comics. Okay. So it's um, interesting. It's, yeah, it's something that we wanted. I mean, if all the indie creators got together and just created one publisher tomorrow, they'd be massive. There's so many great books out there. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just think it's um, it's just really encouraging to see every week when people are putting new comic books on the app for me it's just so rewarding just to see all this new stuff coming on mm. i mean because indie yeah. comics is such a such a niche thing as well isn't it? it always it feels bigger than it is i think when you're when you're talking about audiences um yeah you, you get those sort of rare cases that are, that are bigger than sliced bread um but for a lot of us you know we appreciate each and every reader we get and it's all about oh, yeah. it's yeah. all about maximizing who sees the comic and sometimes you have to step beyond your feelings of the work itself um because no one wants to be that you know shameless pr machine you know that the person who's plugging their book this that and the other. well some people and do. and i'm very conscious yeah. of this at the moment because i've got a kickstarter but it's always perennially um annoyed us is the people who just will have a conversation with you and then throw a pitch you know a, a prompt for their comic in you know it's you've got to be careful there's that fine line isn't there yeah mm. Oh, I'm, for, I'm forever getting Facebook people, people adding me on Facebook, adding me, and then right off the bat they'll send me a message saying, "Thanks for adding me." Um, hey, my kicks, and I'm just thinking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what the what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. just we're yeah. English for God's sake. A little bit of subtlety, yeah. please. Yeah. You wouldn't do you wouldn't do that on the street, would you? It's just come on. It's just uh, <laughs> I, I find that just uh, quite frustrating, really, because we do try to support as many Kickstarters as we can and support yeah. as many integrators as we can. But I think if you're going to just come in cold like that and contact everyone on your friends list yeah. even if you haven't even if you've just added them as a friend i think that's a bit a bit yeah. out of line really so. i'm always I've... conscious of twitter accounts that are the name of a comic yeah, yeah. You, know, <laughs> um, you get that a lot now. I, I think the kickstarter is, is a good thing to bring up at, at the moment um and especially speaking about digital and we've spoken about this quite a few times but i think it bears repeating again seeing as this this episode is all about digital is the price of your PDFs or your price of your digital comic. On mm. some Kickstarters, yeah. it's ridiculous. It it's is, absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Now, yes, you obviously you want to get paid what you think you deserve for the amount of work you've put into it. We're all the same. We always blood, sweat and tears goes into these things. And the amount of money you're getting back for the amount of effort you're putting into it is is unbalanced. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you no, it's not, it'll never balance. Yeah, it'll no, never, yeah, well, never yeah. balance. But that yeah. doesn't mean. And this, this isn't. I mean, it is getting better. I see some creators um, who do kickstarters, and they have wonderful prices for their digital. That you know, yeah. th there's a lot of sense. I think a lot of them are getting more sensible. But yeah. sometimes I I see a book, and this is goes for. Normally, it's it's some of the bigger creators as well. Or, or like bigger sort of campaigns you see on books and you know if you've got just say you've got a 120 20 page book i'm not talking about anything specific by the way <laughs> this is this no, is yeah. <laughs> hypothetical um just say you've got a hundred your kickstarters for a 120 page original graphic novel it's going to be hardback you know brilliant wonderful full color and to, the, the first tier where you're going to get the book is 20 pounds fair enough it's a hardback there's a lot of work that's gone into it you know that that that's great and then sometimes you look at the digital tiers um pounds is also dollars sometimes you know you know you know what's like yeah but then you when you see 120 page essentially you're just going to get a pdf um that is all you'll get let's not let's not put bows and whistles on it that's yeah. literally all you're going to get is a pdf which pretty much everyone can make these days well most people I, I think PDF is hang on, hang it's on. so standard you could do it Tony it's, it's, yeah. you might have talked me through it my friend yeah yeah, uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but but once you know how to do it it's as simple as anything yeah. right um, yeah and 120 page PDF I understand that you want to get the money that you you know the blood sweat and tears that have gone into it but if you're charging for instance like 10 pounds for a PDF nah nope I will never back that never I will, I will never back that Kickstarter um <laughs> At five pounds, would you uh, not back at any level? No, just be, just out of if pure... I if I like the look of the book, um, I'll go. I'm, and this is, I'll probably go for the hardcover more. I do th these days as I'm talking now. I've backed a lot more kickstarters and just gone for the digital only option. 
purely yeah. because, especially with like creators from the states, from the states. or across yeah. the world, yeah. I, I really want to read this book. But and I understand the postage costs. You know, postage is a nightmare across the board. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're running these campaigns, and you have to you have to charge the postage costs, which are, which are killer. It, it just it, unfortunately, and it's gutting sometimes with some of these books. I can't pledge for the hardcover because no. the postage is more than the actual book, which I, yeah, I can't. Yeah. No, I can't do that. But it's got to be like yeah. exceptional for me to do that these days. Yeah. 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 But yeah. if there's a PDF option and it's decent price, yes, you've got my support. Uh, I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. Um, but you really have to be realistic with how much you're uh, charging. And I, th- I think the 120 page graphic novel is probably a bad, bad example because some of the most ridiculous ones that w- that I know we've seen on this show, like sometimes when we've had the WhatsApp group and just been like, look at this, this is ridiculous, which we do every <laughs> week about everything. And it, it, it'll, it'll be about a, t- a 24 page, you know, a Kickstarter for an issue one of something, a 24 page PDF. Um, and it'll be like five pounds. Yeah, in, no, in, no. in what world? In what world is that? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Right? One of the things with uh, PDFs when they say like we get like a digital wallpaper, I don't give a shit about any of that. You can make a digital wallpaper by just screenshotting the flipping. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> don't give a shit about any of that. When you say we get like ten digital, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only person who doesn't give a sh- I, shit. About. I just I, want to I, read the comic. Yeah, do you know, I, yeah. I know. I know. If it's a physical from... print. That's yeah. completely different. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I know where you're coming from, Dan, and I, I, I do understand. I mean, it's nice to have those tiers where it feels like you're getting more. If but... you want to stick a few pinups in the back of the comic, that's fine. Yeah, but, but I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not one for the digital wallpapers and things because <laughs> sometimes all they've done is added a couple of digital wallpapers and a couple of banners or something or gifts or something, and they've added another two or three pounds to, yeah. or dollars to the to the price. It, it doesn't make sense. I think you know people have to be more realistic with what they're charging for, for for their digital, and this certainly, yeah, I I think it will lead on to the next point. Where I think we should talk about is is what to charge for your digital comics when you put them onto any any format you know if you if you're going onto comics on okay. if or if you're on gumroad you know or or however whatever platform well i've just you do. i've just done this yeah. so i've literally done this 3 days ago or something yeah um and i've got i think how many pages is it vince 36 isn't it 36 yeah My, and it's full yes, color it? full color which yeah, which I, color, I, th- I think doesn't really matter when it comes to digital i think yeah i think you're right and it's also it contains some extra material so there's some short stories and stuff in there um and i put it up for 150 um i think even the cheapest you know when they drop they drop prices of 20 page marvel comics on comiXology they're one pound 49 and i thought you get more out of this so i thought 150 seemed reasonable i don't know i'd like to hear what you guys thought i don't think that's a great price yeah okay yeah Yeah, Yeah, it's fine that's a great price yeah it's kind of that price that's just so kind of small that it's not even a consideration about getting it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that's yeah. 150. What's that? Especially, especially sometimes when it. it's a one and done sort of title as well. I'm not saying that this yeah. particular title is, but um, yeah. sometimes okay. I think, well, I can just read a, you know, one pound 50. I can read an entire story for that. You know, take my money. Yeah. It's a good amount mm. of reading time in that book as well. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you've got sort of the two short stories as well. So I think, got, yeah. yeah, the pros. Yeah. 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 I, I really think you, you, I, I think one pound 50 is a great price for that. I think people Thanks, need mate. to, I think you need to look at your digital side of things as a not a lost leader, but more of a kind of a promotional tool to to sell your print. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's people charging too much for their PDFs is it's just crazy. It really yeah. is because you people want to read the PDF and then go and buy the print copy. They're not going to do that if they've spent seven quid or five quid or whatever on yeah. a PDF. Yeah. You're just doing yeah. yourself a disservice, I think. Um, <laughs> and as well with a PDF that. They're just going to share it around with all their mates and all that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? If it's uh... and it gets the word about, I mean, you got only got to look at the amount of web comics out there that then do gangbusters when you print them up into collections. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's yeah. a big thing we've seen for years now. We thought it might be a little blip when we started, but it's like stuff like Kira Regis and Dan's book and stuff. Vanguard, you know, it's like it's um it's it's still a going concern. Still, pe- people still are invested in it because they've read the digital one. You know, yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. so there's so many of these web comics um, that. Uh, well they'll have a following which is i think we'll talk about in a bit but you know i look at the web comic and it looks great but when i look at their web page it's like oh this is page 156 
Oh god, yeah. I don't want to go back to page one and see it from the start. <laughs> but if well, it... I quite happily have a two hundred page comic, exactly. But but then they do it. You know? They do a Kickstarter, and I think this is perfect. I will yeah, I it's... will back this, and I can read it from page it's... one. Mm. It's yeah. all been cur- curated. Yeah. It's all been organised, sorted out, maybe even improved on yeah. in the web version. And here it is. It's yeah, it's a fantastic uh, sort yeah. of way of doing it. I think I think probably what we're saying there is for people who are putting their web comic up or their PDF up for sale. Don't take the piss. Don't be too greedy because it really does show. People do notice that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it, just from a purely economics point of view. People, why would people spend five quid on your PDF of an indie comic when they could buy three issues of X Men for that digitally? Do you know what I mean, you've got to remember yeah. or you're or not. a physical cheap trade in a, in a yeah. you know, like a, a, a sale at a comic shop. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that gets yeah. me is if I can buy something physical for the same price, I'm really yeah. like, mm, I'm not sure yeah. about this. I yeah. get a Michael Golden fucking G.I. Joe trade yeah. for yeah. a PDF yeah. Yeah. of a, a small press that I don't even know. I mean, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. We because that. we're in a worldwide digital market, I mean, every, unfortunately, it's a level. The great, the, the plus thing on that, it's a level playing field, so anybody yeah. can create and get it out there. But you're also up against the big boys as well, so you've got to price it in consideration of that. Yeah. And mm. We've actually found a lot of people are putting stuff on the Comic House app not just for the revenue that's going to come out of it, but purely from a promotional point of view. Um, um, Reese Finley did it before he launched his Kickstarter. He put his first book up there, so people read it, okay. then went to the Kickstarter, and it proved. And Andy Cliff did the same thing. And I know Stuart McCune's done the same thing. He put actors it's, up. Exactly. And if you look at his recent Kickstarter, he's, he's killing it. I mean, he always kills it. He's even gone beyond what he had the previous time, you know. Yeah, And exactly. I'm sure a lot of that will be eyes from Comic House, yeah, yeah. Well, I think one of the things I've learned... People have picked it up on Comic House and, and gone and found it as a result, do you know what I mean? So it's... Yes. Uh, yeah. It's, the, the PDF price, I think, is really important to, to, to just gauge it properly. And I think as well, Vince, as you say, if, if people are seemingly taking the piss, you're not... I wouldn't want to back the whole campaign just out of kind yeah. of because I'm a bit of an asshole like that. I'll just be like, <laughs> I'll cut my, to spite my face, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, it does put you off, doesn't it? That's yeah. the yeah. one of the things yeah. with the uh, the cheaper PDF as well. It's that uh, building up a following before you get a Kickstarter going or like you ask people for crowdfunding. Because if you basically just pop on the scene with a comic, unless it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, you're going to get hard to build up sort of like traction and and following because it's, it's something I've learned. You have got to do a lead in, even if it's with like little, you know, a blog or a Twitter account, or yeah. you know, you got to get people interested before you press go. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing is guaranteed. Absolutely nothing is guaranteed. Even with, you know, if you've got a following, um, you still got to you still got to push it because you know, yeah. the, you may have a following, but that following may not hear every time you've you've talked about it. So you need to keep going. Um, but yeah, yeah, d- digital on Kickstarter is one thing, but obviously that's a PDF. I think across the board, PDF is is the fairly standard one. That's that's certainly how we when we get sent comics um, very graciously by um, you know creators and listeners, you know that they, they yeah. email stuff to us. Um, it's it's always PDFs. I know there is other you know CBR formats and stuff, but I think the easiest yeah. one for everyone is is, is PDFs. Yeah. And it's easy for us to share and just sort of say, oh, read this, read this, we've been sent this. Um, The thing I've noticed of recent, maybe about the last year, is it used to be almost entirely Dropbox links is what I would be sent review copies on. Mm. But I have to say the amount of cloud storage um, type Dropbox type apps is is really ballooned out. You know, there's loads at the moment. Um, Seeing a lot of Google Drive links and things like that. Yeah, Um, even... even, um, I keep having to download apps onto my iPad to download stuff because it's. Um, I mean, Google's big now. That's what I probably. I'm, I'm. I probably get more on that than I do on Dropbox now. Oh, Google's um, doing all right, is it? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Google are Google's doing. All right, doing are they? Yeah, yeah, they're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. They're a little. They're a little startup that no one's heard of. Yeah, I'm fair. Google Drive. I don't have Word on my home machine, so I dump right. it on Google Drive, and then you can read it and edit it on there, which oh, is fucking okay. great. That's a great idea, yeah. Because Word won't fire up, or you can read, but you can't make any amends or do anything, or even copy the fucking text. So uh, that's a right pain in the ass. Uh, Google oh, stepped in. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah, taking it up. <laughs> that one of the Two IT fingers crowd. to the man. Fucking office. <laughs> <laughs> 
We've got um, a host of. I mean, I'm banging on about Comic House here, so you'll have to excuse no, me. That's that's right, man. That's what you know. Um, we've got quite a, a nice load of reviewers that actually have access to the Comic House app now. So if you are listening to this and you're a, a reviewer or podcast or whatever, give us a shout because we're finding that people are putting their stuff up on Comic House, and it's and it's an easy way, as well as selling it Dropbox and all this sort of stuff, to just say to people say to review it's now on the comic house app for reviewing so um it's quite a nice way for the reviewers yeah that's excellent yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 um yeah so um just say you've, you've got your pdf for your comic okay uh, let, let's start with this you finished your comic your opus maybe maybe it was like you know your 20 page comic just say and you're thinking right okay i want to release it digitally i don't want i don't want to do print I, I'm, I'm just gonna go digital yeah. because i can't afford to do print say you know, yeah, because that yeah. It, that is a, a very viable for a lot of people these days. Because print isn't cheap; um, nothing's yeah. cheap these days, actually. Um, so you can only you can only go digital. But you're thinking, where do I go? You know, what what for, what formats are available to me? Um, well, luckily in this day and age, there's tons. <laughs> um, yeah. So obviously, we we've, we've got the aforementioned Comic House. Join them. Really? Join the cult. And uh, join us. Drink the Kool Aid. Drink the Kool Aid. Drink the Kool Aid, <laughs> and you'll love it. Um, not not just for like the community, but there's loads of it. You know, you'll be sitting amongst loads of other fantastic titles on there. Um, but I mean, the the Amazon one, well, quite literally, the Amazon one is Comicsology, um, which I know, I, I I see, is is the biggest one across the board. Um, yeah. Certainly, I've mentioned many times on this show that I've. On the Wednesday, I've picked up a, t- a title from Comicsology. That's I've got, a, you know, that and Comic yep. House are my two readers. That's that's yeah. My recommended is Comicsology from like yeah, for yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously, they've it, it, there's a big audience um, there. Also, everyone's on there. So just because <laughs> you're in a bigger pond, but there's a lot more fish. Um, I would say the second biggest one in the UK is the 2018 one. Yeah, which is that's an interesting one. I, yeah, I, it I, is. I, I think because that's just two thousand AD stuff, isn't it? That's just Rebellion's one, isn't it? Yeah, and, and um, some of the old, you know, comics, um, yeah. UK comics stuff that they're yeah. putting on there. Yeah. But they two thousand AD doesn't put their stuff elsewhere. Yeah. Um, which is a strange one. That not many people understand. No. But they um they only put their stuff on their app, so they're kind of keeping their own little empire. Yeah. You know? So so if you love your two thousand AD, um, probably get that app. You know, if you if you want to try their digital digital comics out yeah i've got it there's some free stuff on there yeah, and i've got stuff. it as well it's great yeah yeah um if you're publishing for yourself it's gonna be useless to you because it's 2008 uh, yeah 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 <laughs> um so yeah you've got comicsology is sequential still going strong tony i know you've mentioned it, it is mate I've, I've literally just checked it and it still is they've got their i think they make most of their bones out of um they they do a lot of the dark horse stuff so martha washington right. black hammer um, or the Department H. There's a lot of stuff on there that is um, American stuff, you know. Yeah. Is there much yeah. in the way of indie and smaller press sort of titles? There's a few things. I think Avery Hill, off the top of my head, I haven't looked at it for a while, but I think Avery Hill were on there. Yeah. Um, and there's a few people who are sort of popping up on there. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, there's uh, um, what's the um co- comic scene on there? The thing oh, nice. we did. Oh Dan, yeah, do nice. you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's on there. There's a few little comic magazines. There's a magazine called Infinity, which is about, I think it's free, actually, yeah. which is a, about comics. So there's there's one on Neil Gaiman and there's one on Eddie Campbell and stuff like that. You know, that's I quite mean, good. it'd be interesting to see what that process is like for a creator going through Sequential and publishing their stuff there. Um, yeah. we, we can only speak uh, for, for the, like what we've done, um, of which I've yeah. done. You know, I've done a couple, but you know, Comic House couldn't be easier. And uh, Comicsology, I've done it enough that it's easy. Um, as like Dan said, Dan said it before as well. If you've got a PDF of your comic, um, then it's fine. Uh, with Comicsology, yeah, yeah. if you're putting your first book on Comicsology, it right. will take a while for them to a- approve it. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about this at the moment. I was looking at their website before we came online actually to figure it out. I yeah. actually had a look at that in Comic House. Comic House seems a lot easier. Yeah, I've got to tell you. Is, yeah. Yeah. So, Comic, yeah. yeah, yeah, Comic House is 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 the easiest one. I mean, with Comicology as well, there's a lot more um you know, you, you can't just post anything up there. They 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 no. will they will it's literally curated. Yeah, they will say, "No, that doesn't fly." Or, you know, you say the word fart too many times and they'll kick, no, they no, they they say right, that okay. because it's like, well, maybe rough, 
I was kind of cautious on the first couple of episode issues of Vanguard. I like tone down the swearing because I think you can only have fuck like two or three times. Yeah. And uh, then really after that, I didn't give take... a shit. I just fucking left it all in there, and no one's done anything. Yeah. So what's uh, the um what's the manga one? Is it sh- is it shown and jump? Is that the one? Shown and jump. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. that's huge, man. If you're yeah. into manga, yeah. everyone's yeah. all over that. Aren't they? I know. I know. Sam Webster's yeah. a big proponent of that, yeah. and that's got loads. That is, you know, if you like your manga. And we're talking about digital comics, and you're not reading this. Um, it's not an app that I've started yet, but I, I think this. No, me yeah. I, I think yeah. when I dip my toe in it, I'll probably drown because there'll be that much choice, and I won't know where to start. But um, yeah, I think yeah. that's probably the place to go because if you're going to like, if you look at these other ones, um, like Comicsology, say you get your manga titles in there, but they're dotted around, and it's not, you know. It, it, so is that a subscription show and shown and jump? Whatever it is, is that a subscription based one or yeah, is that? I, I believe they set it up as a subscription based app because they were suffering a lot from uh, pirating and illegal downloads and torrents. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is huge, huger in the manga world than it even is in the comic world, isn't it? The, yeah. the, the American yeah. Western comic world. Yeah, yeah. There's another one that's come up which has got a lot of manga on it called um, Graphite. If anyone's oh, come across I've not heard of that one. one. Yeah, I saw that one. It's um, it, um, launched in the States, hasn't it, a couple of months ago. I think it's some guys who are previously involved in some other site. I can't remember the exact gist of it all now, but it's um, yeah. it's quite a similar setup to Comic House. But they've got some, they've got some good titles on there. So Yeah, it's, um, I, I think they're about to launch a sort of subscription side of it, aren't they? I think you can – I don't know how you do this, but you can look at it for free. I don't really oh, know okay. how it works at the moment. There's yeah. adverts. There's adverts placed within the when you're reading the comic book. There's adverts that pop up. Right. Okay. I, right, know, okay. So I, I talked to um, uh, Ed and Aaron who um put a book up there um in the states, and they um I said how the how are they funding this and making money? So it's uh there's adverts that pop up as you're reading the comic. Books. Right. Yeah. Harry Marcos from Marcosia was telling me about it. I think um he was he okay. showed me it sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, Cool. I mean, it's um my my worry about all these all the apps that are jo- it's 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 great when you've got an app that comes up which has got everything on it or a lot of stuff on it. But I think when publishers are looking at launching their own ones, like you've got your Marvel Unlimited, your DC, yeah. app, Dark Horse one, yeah, yeah and your yeah. 2000 AD and all this sort of stuff, I think it's going to become quite expensive for the punter. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Marvel's doesn't Marvel sync with Comicsology? Is that right? I think it, I I, I think it might I think do. It, I, th- I think I've yeah. um, I've seen on Comicsology read you know read for free if you've got un, you know Marvel Unlimited or something like that. Well, right, we're going to come yeah. against the same problem that we did with uh, what we're going to come Television up against with streaming, TV yeah. streaming service. Yeah, and it does unfortunately force not force people back to piracy, but people were like rather than have ten fucking subscriptions to watch ten shows that are on ten different channels, yeah, people pirate pirate it. Yeah, I, I, I'm a bit worried about it because it, it's the same as not having Spotify but having Universal app and a Warner's app yeah. and a Sony app and it just doesn't make yeah. sense to me where, where people just want to go to one or two places and get all their stuff. And yeah. That's all I can be bothered to do, man. I'm not, I can't yeah. be bothered with it all. Yeah, yeah. I think it does come down uh, – here's my anti-corporate hat goes on again. Slides on very easy. It's just greed. <laughs> they want more and more, 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 more <laughs> yeah. fucking pie, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they don't want to pay fifty percent of their profits to someone just because they're using their app to play. They want all of it. Yeah, I mean, Universal... we're going to have a Netflix app, we're going to have a Disney app, we're going to have Amazon yeah. Prime, and it's just going to be carnage. It really yeah. is. Be do, you, do you ever see behind the scenes, and do you ever get like any sort of marketing back or any um, logist, um details back of people people's ages from your app? Do you no, think? Do you... Don't. No. Right. Interesting. No. Yeah. I no, just I wondered don't... what the younger generation, the older generation, you know, what. You know, I don't know. People in London read compared to people in Devon, or you know, it's, I'd be mm. interested to see if there's that. Yeah, sort of... I, might, I might see if they can. I mean, we don't ask for ages and stuff like that when people sign up, so we may yeah. maybe something to look into because it'd be interesting to look at the stats on that yeah. and yeah. see if it all works out. But it's, um, I mean, compared to Comicsology, Comic House is uh, a small pond, very small yeah. pond. Mm. I mean, so um, but I suppose it it comes with benefits that you will be more featured on there. Yeah. As a result, and you're not going to get as lost amongst all the other titles as you would on yeah. comics. And you get you get better money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we've done the um, you know, picking out comic covers each week and stuff. And uh, you know, during a comicsology browse. Um, so therefore, you know, I scroll all the way to the end just in case I've missed a gem, yeah. you know, of, of a cover. Um, if I wasn't doing that, 
I probably would have missed out on a lot of titles that look quite interesting. You know, mm. I've certainly uh, yeah. bought indie books because of that browse that you know would have been lost it because they're third from the bottom of 120 titles that go live. Which is where the digital have got to replicate the shelf in a shop for me because yeah. one of the beauties of like book shopping, record shopping, and especially comic shopping is I see everything on the shelves when I walk in. Yeah, and I think that's always the problem with like it's always historically the problem for me for buying like books off Amazon and stuff. No matter how many books they recommend you, you'll never get that little sort of gem that you wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I think you get that on the shelf, and you've got to be able to re- replicate that on the front page of a which Comic House does successfully, and I think Comicsology does successfully as well. You've got to replicate yeah. that, haven't you? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because when you like search in, for instance, someone of like a superhero, and there's like fucking half a million comics. Yeah, I'm just like holy fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. something that came up this week. We were chatting about it earlier in the week, weren't we? Where um, I think it's uh, the comics laureate. What's her name again? I've forgotten the lady's name. Um, oh god. Anyway, she's she's been in to see I think foils and discussed with foils about yes. putting yeah. comics on the shelf with books. And um, I've got to be honest with you, I don't want that. To be fair, like I thought that was a good idea, and then when you mentioned it, and I considered it for a moment, I was like, I don't, I can't see that working. How, I can't see that working. Firstly, the where do you where do you file stuff? Do you know is you know what's 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 Wonder Woman? Is it a fantasy book? Is it a yeah. is it feminist? Is it a feminist book? Is it a superhero? You know, a crime book. And also, I don't want to have to scan four floors of foils to find just browsing for comics. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's it's a weird one, isn't it? The browse is really important, and for, for certainly, which is why we enjoy the comic mark guys and stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah. You have to have you have to replicate that online, otherwise it's you know you're not going to open your eyes to new stuff and develop new readers. I think. Yeah, I, c- I can't see. There's not a big enough showing as well for the comic stuff to be in the different sections. You'd only take up what a, a fifth of a shelf or something. It's yeah, uh, this one yeah. Where, and like the, the manga stuff. You want to keep that all together. It's yeah, the idea of splitting up is just absolutely bonkers. I can understand yeah. the idea of trying to get it like. If there was some books, the, I'd be open to it. Yeah. yeah. Some of yeah. the no-brow stuff, you could quite easily, like, you'd have it in the graphic novel section and then have it maybe in a section like uh, Cat's book, like in or, the travel section or yeah, travel yeah, blog exactly. or something. Yeah. That yeah. might work. I think if you did both, I'm, I'm, I'd yeah. love it, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, don't want it to be diluted. No. I think um, certainly if you're worried about getting lost in the crowd, which, which you can do quite easily week on week, um, another avenue that I see more and more and it's something that I've certainly, you know, last week I talked I talked about a title that that does this, um, is is Gumroad. I'm seeing a lot more mm, people using yeah. Gumroad, which is yeah, you're using it loads at the moment. I've noticed. Yeah, mate. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's literally, and a lot of these titles are very much Gumroad is a pay what you think is fair. Here's the book. Yeah, you know, you can get it for free. I mean, most most of the time you can get it free. Not all the time you can. I think you can set stuff, but yeah. you could say here's my book for free. Read it if you want. Or, you know, if you feel generous enough, th- throw me a, a, a couple of dollars or, you know, whatever. I've and always paid. I've always paid. Because if, yeah, I've, yeah. It's mad, if I've made the effort to go to this place yeah. and they saying, do what you want, I, yeah. start, I always think it's right. It, it just feels yeah. wrong. It just feels yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not for everyone, perhaps, but for us. Yeah. 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 But this harks back to music. The first time I ever noticed this was that, um, you'll know this, Pete, was the Radiohead album. Radiohead, yeah. Pay what yeah. you want, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first time I noticed. It may have happened before, and I'm sure it will have done, but yeah. that's the first I, time I ever find, noticed. I did a find the box set, so. <laughs> so right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other good thing about the Gumroad uh, experience is, like, it's got the app. You, sorry, you put your PDF or whatever upload there. You pay it, and it automatically emails it straight away to the person who's bought it. You don't like we're big cartel fan. We've had to yeah. action yeah, it when someone from a Dropbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah someone yeah. like says, "Oh, I want this PDF," and then you, it seems a bit yeah. stupid that it, it I, can't just automate bought, that. That that comic I bought last week, Angel. I, I was literally yeah, here. Here's the money. Bought it. Here's your link. Mm. Job done. Yes, straight away. Yeah, like yeah. that. Although I'm, I, I do try and try and send them quite quickly from our account and from uh, yeah. my yeah. new one. You know, yeah. but I have to say, mate, just as an aside, that fucking book rocked. It's good, isn't it? I've it. had yet, I haven't yeah. had a chance to read it yet. Loved it, man. I should, yeah, I should get it's on that. Beautiful story. Yeah, yeah. really touch. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. you can do what uh, Robert Carey did, and he uh, did Cruel Sunset, didn't he? The yes. Comic. He had the whole comic, and he's just pinned it on the top of his bio with a link to the comic. And what a great way of kind of using that as a calling card, because I don't think 
I think he was limited on what he could do with it. So yeah. Yeah, having right. it free to read is just great. No, yeah, I did yeah. it with that Silver Surfer comic that me and Dave yeah. Brown did. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't sell it because it's a Silver Surfer no. comic. And we had a chuckle doing it. So I just send it out to people to see what they think. Yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of avenues to get your, your work out there. I think you have to think about what your work actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. for, for instance, like yeah, you said, if, 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 if it's essentially fan fiction of something, don't sell it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll get in, but, you'll you'll get in trouble. <laughs> like you guys, I'd still be fucking making comics, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I would be. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't to get the readership. I, I, I think it'd be wrong, but I don't. I don't care what people think about my comics. Really, there's <laughs> you know, there's a, well, maybe there's like four or five people whose opinion you guys are present, and a couple of others whose opinion I respect. And beyond that, I don't. You know, I just do it for myself. I always yeah. have. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, so there's lots of options uh, available to you. If, if you want to let us know of any others that we that we've missed out, on, you know, we'll put links on the show notes. So just email us uh, when we do the contact links at the end of the show. Um, but also, uh, it has never been easier for any comic creator than it is right now to get your books in the hands of whether it be the general public or reviewers. Um, because we were talking about the PDF, yes, everyone has a PDF, and everyone who's made a comic has probably had that email blast where they've <laughs> they've sent out the PDF to lots and lots of different websites and reviews and stuff. Um, I think at some point we'll we should we will talk about the way you should do that, the way you should send stuff to you know we'll probably do yeah. another we'll do another show about like reviews or journalism and stuff and talk about the way you you should present your work. Um, but it, it it is easy, you know. If you've got that PDF, if you've got that digital product, um, because it it may be a labour of love. They're all labours of love. But at the end of the day, it is a product. It is a it is a thing. Even if it's just a PDF, that is a product. That is something. Um, you know, once you've got that, it's up to you how much you charge for it, or or you know. But you can send it anywhere. Do you know what I mean? You could just post it. If you've made made a fifty page graphic novel, and all of a sudden you want it to be online to read free yeah have at it if you want to put it on comicsology and charge a ridiculous price that no one will ever pay for you can do it but, but yeah a lot of people do yeah yeah uh, but with digital is it's never been easier to to publish comics side note it does mean and you see an awful lot more drek yeah we do <laughs> we're yeah. all all about the positive and we're not t- just talking about anything particular here but certainly because anyone can publish anyone can publish, anyone can publish. <laughs> I, I think yeah it's, it's very similar I'm, i know i keep banging on about the music model but it's very very similar to the music model back in the 60s and 70s if you wanted to make an album you had to go to a recording studio spend yeah. thousands yeah. of pounds yeah. time record label all that sort of stuff and we create... still got quite a lot of shit you know what i mean <laughs> but just times yeah, but... that by yeah yeah but now I I could create I've got no musical talent whatsoever I could create an album tonight and have it on on iTunes tomorrow Do you know what I mean So yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's a very similar thing where yeah. it's it, it's it is easier for everyone But as a result, it's two um, sides it, of the coin, isn't it? Because you yeah, have all yeah. those amazingly creative people who can now do you know fan art or they can make comics and you look at it and you think my God this person should mm. this should be their job full time, and then you get the other people that. <laughs> I'm 100% positive like I'm really I know you are too Vince like into synthwave music and we won't be listening to half the stuff even a third of the stuff we're we're not for this kind of advent of technology able to put this music together and bang it out just like one one person yeah just uh, one one person at home just putting their heart and soul into whatever they're doing Um, but also you've got that one person but you've also got 100 people putting total crap bullshit (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, one of um, yeah. it's all a bit, there's a there's a lot of, but it makes it makes it interesting trying to find the the gems, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Nuggets yeah. of things, so. and you can tell quickly. I think Pete, you can you can look at one or two images and you know, don't you? I think yeah. generally in my, I, in I my can experience. tell I can tell from an album cover or a single cover whether the music's going to be any good. Mostly, I mean, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the first look, isn't it? Yeah, and I think. I don't know if you agree with this or not, but you can probably do the same with comic books. You the can, cover it, is so important. It's so important. Sometimes, yeah. You can sometimes get burned. You can, yeah, I've been We've all been so burned, haven't we? We, we have all been burned, haven't we? By... Yeah. It's usually where there's a different artist on the cover. Yeah. But in my experience, that's, oh. that's the... 
if yeah. it's a create your, create your own title, good art does not mean a good writer, which yeah. I've been fucked over many times. <laughs> yeah. So this fucking art is amazing. And then he got the comment through, so I can barely get through half of it, and I thought, ah, oh, just yeah. ain't gonna read this. Yeah. Yeah, I did back one recently for for two yeah. comics, and I thought, yeah, this would be good. And then I got a third through the first one. I was like, oh, I can't even bother to read the rest of it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'd love you. I'd love to have like a little mic in Dan's brain while he's reading a comic sometimes. I think that would uh, God, I wouldn't. The great... things you'd hear, Jesus. I um, wanted to do for one of the videos, like me reading a comic and then like cut to black and then fade back in and just toss it. He goes, well, that was a load of shit. <laughs> uh, it's a bit mean to uh, whoever's comic yeah. it was. We, we got a couple of uh, questions when we put a shout out earlier this week about digital. We got a couple of people get in touch with us. So let's um, quickly uh, run through them before we get on to mm. the rest of the show oh, nice. later. Um, Nick Bryan. Uh, at Nick MB yeah. on Twitter. Nick at Hackney. Oh, Nick Bryan. Yeah. Nick at Hackney, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great bloke. Um, we're a big fan of his work. Um, he said, We hear sometimes about digital comics having plateaued. Is that true for indies as much as the mainstream? And what do you think uh, will we'll get yeah. it over the plateau? Wider availability of cheap tablets? Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, so you've got two been questions available in there. for a while now. There's been a, a couple of years of cheap um, Amazon tablets, haven't there? Yeah, yeah. The, but the Fire, the Kindle Fire is like twenty, forty quid something. Like that. That's not. Yeah, you can't yeah. get in a sale. You pay twenty or quid for it. It's yeah, ridiculous. it's not much. Yeah, yeah. they want you, want you to get in and start buying the books, which yeah. they will do make the money on. Uh, that's a very difficult question, one that I'm not entirely qualified to answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that there's not been for after an initial big bump in big company digital sales i hear that it has slowed down right, there's, okay. a, there's a gradual climb from what i saw on a report recently but not that you'd know it's not like 50 percent of people are reading them digitally by any yeah. stretch yeah you know it's more like 15 to 20 as i understand it at the moment yeah i saw um, someone I... read the fucking sun on the ipad oh, oh god <laughs> uh, um... I, I think it's gonna i think it's gonna keep increasing i know i'm, I'm probably a yeah bit it will honest, but I just think as technology kind of uh, outstrips itself and becomes more available and you get more storage on, on smaller tablets. So, I mean, saying smaller tablets, I've, I've got a, a quite a big Kindle Fire, a 10-inch Kindle Fire. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but um, reading, <laughs> reading comic books on there, it just looks amazing. It really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I of... think as well, I think we'll see the rise of VPNs and people reading it on American Comicsology and stuff like that. Yeah. With the state, the sterling at the moment. Yeah. Mm. I can see, you know, I can see people making, you know, cause it's the same way that people watch American Netflix or something on a VPN or whatever it is, yeah. you yeah. know, or Prime when they're in America. It's... We're yeah. kind of in that moment of, of, of the crossover between digital and physical. And, yeah. Uh... Yeah, because I, I, I think the lifeblood of indie comics as it stands right now is still the printed book and the comic convention and all those all those soldiers out there going and, and to every convention. Yeah, I think, I think it always will be. I think it yeah. always will be that. I, th- I I do think the digital will increase, but it will yeah. end up complementing that. So but, did we did we talk about this last week? I can't remember because we've reached that tipping point, and we we're in the early eighties. The most comics sold were in newsstands and yeah. uh, you know in drugstores, and then in the mid eighties, we the more comics were sold in specialist comic shops. So you had the direct market. Yeah. And as I understand it, I heard I think I heard Jason Wood talking about this in eleven o'clock comics. We've hit the point now where more comics are sold in bookshops than they are in comic That's shops. That's interesting. Yeah, so it's an interesting tipping point. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's very interesting times for the. And a lot of bookshops are now era. behind digital. A lot of bookshops have had to invest in it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I mean, I I think one of the great um great things about digital now as an indie creator, um wherever you are in the world, someone else on the other side of the world will could read your comic. Mm. Um, yeah. you know, we're very lucky to have, you know, gotten to know creators from uh, America, Australia, wherever. And we whether we've spoken to them on this show, whether that, you know, we've read their books um that never would have happened you know the availability of comics arguably has never been better uh, yeah it's something for everyone now isn't it yeah let's face it yeah you know and especially uh, with all the shipping costs as well i mean the the digital yeah. side of things is just it makes total sense for a worldwide audience it really yeah. does it's you can yeah. just you could and look at the books so... and as long as i'm awake 
Yeah. Uh, and I can approve it. It'll be on the the app within yeah. an hour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, look I, at the comics we're seeing from that are not available physically, like the Europe comics that oh, are coming God, out, yeah. stuff like that. You know. Yeah. 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 We're, we're we're mourning the fact that we can't get them uh, physically. Yet. Yeah. But, yeah. but oh, eventually God, they're yeah. so good that, that that someone like Dark Horse will pick them up and start publishing them. Um, but yeah, hopefully. Yeah, um, I, I I think it's it's a great time for indie uh, indie comics and in, in terms of digital, and no matter how much you love, you know, you, know, you could be the the oldest school comic book reader or comic book creator in the world. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you're not involved in digital or taking advantage of the fact of how available it is or getting to know how to release your books digitally you are shooting yourself not in the foot in the fucking head if you ask me because print only goes so far these days you 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 need to i think you need to take advantage of, of oh yeah the yeah you do to yeah you. even even me look at me yeah. i'm doing I mean, it, I, mean, it. I, I, I wouldn't even have show. thought of it five years yeah. ago yeah. yeah, all of yeah. us on this show, we love printed books. We'd love to, you know, print all of our books and like, you know, just talk about that all the time. But also, you just got to be sensible. You know, if you, you can have a wider audience with digital, that's that's the be all and end all of it. You know, can I ask, can I ask you a question, Pete, about the actual comics themselves for a second? Yeah, of course. Um, we, we've talked a little bit in the past about the difference in reading experiences between a physical copy and a digital copy. And I, I really think that um, Guided View has changed the way we make comics. Um, it's it's changed the page turn. The page turn isn't half as relevant for this gu- for Guided View. And when you turn a page and you see like you, you, you uh, because you're only human, you do take in a whole page as you turn the page. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Um, but with Guided View, you only take in the next panel. Is it something that you're aware of? Do you think that comics are changing because of that, do you think? I don't know. It's a really good question. I hope they're not, right. to be honest right. with you, because I think it would be a real shame, because for me, getting to that full-page spread and t- turning the page to that full-page spread, do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's, it's, it's just something that's so special about that. And you do take in the whole page, and you do yeah. have to... I find myself stopping myself going to the last panel do you know what i mean to... yeah i know what you mean yeah we, I, we, the best example I've, i I, I, did, I put a thing up on the blog which is quite popular last year about i read a, an issue of master of kung fu and in it midnight hangs himself and if as you turn the page you see him falling 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 and then oh my god what's happening oh oh somebody's oh. falling yeah uh, so it's sort of falling <laughs> falling falling then the last panel um in a sort of gwen stacy kind of way the, the rope tightens and he hangs himself, you know, Yeah. which when you turn the page in, you know, the Master Kung Fu comic, you see the whole thing. You see him hang himself and it's a shock at that point. But when mm. you're swiping through the guided view, you go fall, fall. Oh, he's died there. You know, it's a whole different experience. It, it really is. is yeah. you know? I'm, I'm really hoping people aren't creating their comic books to to, to go along with the guided view thing. Don't get me right. wrong. The guided view thing's great. It's not something that we use on Comic House just it's because. Not, no. But you I'm, do you do have to scroll through the page depending on the size of your tablet, don't you? I, t- I find I have to scroll yeah. through the page, you know, if that makes depending sense. Depending on the size yeah. of the tablet. And we have got a landscape mode, which basically you can split the page into two halves and kind of scroll up and down it, which is quite right. a good idea. But um, okay. for me, just to see a splash page in all its entirety and to, to see that last panel on the same page is quite important for me. Mm. So, um, Right, interesting. I've never been uh, yeah. a, I don't, I'm not dissing the guided view. I just prefer to... To the page layout is something before. you know it's, it's yeah. an important element of comics is the page layout we talk about it all the time on here don't we you uh, know? I, I yeah. Think yeah also as well as a guided view um web comics have changed quite a bit in terms of yeah. the way things are paced um yeah exactly you, man yeah you, you know yeah. Um, someone like dan who's creating vanguard and he's treating it in the issues type format so you know he's he's got those you've got the page turns in mind haven't you and you've, you've got the yeah you know the old school stuff but some people are just doing an ongoing sequential story um, and you know what is a page turn when it comes to those things when it comes to a web comic you know, or some yeah. pages are a start and a finish to a story for each one because one might come out only once a week or once yeah. a month or something you yeah. know you kind of got to work that out you know yeah it's evolving all the time isn't it it really is but i can't see comic house going to the guided view thing anytime soon because interesting I, yeah i like i like to be able to turn the page and see the whole page mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of work to add that guided view thing as well, I would imagine. I think that's probably why Comicsology takes so long to um, uh, yeah. submit to, to be honest with you, because obviously there's a lot of technical aspects in all that. Whereas Comic House, as I said, you can 
submit it to me and, and the yeah. guys and we just get it up within kind of an hour on the site because it's just a straight transfer. We transfer the PDF, break it down into JPEGs because it's a bit easier to, to manage and then uh, you can just get it right up on the uh, on the app right away, which I think people just want it right away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they just want yeah. It yeah. yeah that's nice to see. One, the I think thing you Go on, mate, one quick point about the uh, Comixology Guide of View is uh, it's slightly odd in the fact that someone starts making creative decisions about your comic and how it's going to be yeah. uh, read. Because yeah. if you've been on a full page splash and it zooms in on a couple of boxes of text yeah. and then zooms out to reveal. It's like, say, I didn't want that, but you've done that. It's yeah. kind of you, you're getting involved in the creative process. And you can't go, yeah. back to the story. You can't go backwards and forwards with them about it. It's just the way it is. It's the way it is, and that's it. Okay. It's, yeah, yeah. it's an odd yeah. one. I know yeah. they've um, they've reduced their staff quite significantly at Comicsology, haven't they? Recently, Have there was really? a, a news article really? about okay. it. Yeah, and I I presume some of that is down to automation. I don't know. Oh, interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah. the yeah. robots the robots yeah, have taken over. I'm not sure what. It's probably quite a costly experience to kind of inter, integrate that into a com, the Comic House app as well. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. It, even if I was against it, I don't think I'd want to do it. Do you know what I mean? I'd the the funding we get through the subscriptions and the ad revenue we split with the with the creators and stuff and I wouldn't really want to kind of I just want to use the money that Comic House gets to for the server costs and for upgrades yeah. and, and all that yeah. sort of stuff so um I wouldn't want to take a risk and do the guide of you because I'm not sure everyone would want it as Dan said it's you want to I don't want to start a and r in a project do you know what I mean and deciding yeah. which panels yeah, yeah. should be seen uh, more significantly than others and which zooms in where and all that sort of thing i just want to present the pdf as the creator intended it to be so and some um, some projects do not suit a guided view it's just no. as simple as that the, yeah. the batwoman book is the one the one that is much quoted isn't it from a few years ago 10 12 years ago and the layers from that were like it's like the, the arms you know the arms sweeping around a clock or you know look at look like a stained glass window how do you replicate that in a guided view it's a difficult thing you know yeah I think I mean a, a book like Thirty Two Kills, which I'm, um, I think you guys are all, are all oh, aware of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that's laid that's laid out in book form and PDF form is just it's the crux of the whole story. Do you know what I mean? The, the panels, yeah. the sixteen panels are just so important. I think just to have one panel swiping through all the time would just uh, would just change the whole experience of reading that book. Yeah. 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 Plus, you'd be swiping an awful lot. There's tons of panels in that book. Yeah. Um, yeah, he we, would, we, yeah. We, we've got another. Which has um, been a criticism of Mr. Miracle, actually, man. I know we're big fans of Mr. the Mr. Miracle book, but I've ha- I've heard that's a big criticism of it because it's that, like, there's a lot of panels and there's. It worked, it's laid better, out for, it it worked better for me digitally than it did in print. Really? That's, that's... On, a, on a guided view? Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, I'd, I'd heard the opposite from someone just the other day. But I just I just thought there was there was some of the spreads where. Um, it's it's very much the same figure, like not really moving. It could just be a facial expression yeah. over like nine panels or eighteen panels or whatever. Um, yeah. When you have the guided view, there's that. It's almost the dramatic pacing of it, it that works mm. quite nicely. Uh, okay. But seeing just, it on, there's a movie seeing like it on a page did that, nothing. Yeah. It just flattened it. But that's me. Per- that's me personally. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. almost an animation quality to that. Do you think? Yeah. In a certain. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we've got got another um, question from at noob comic guy um okay um thank you for listening and send it i think it's the first time we've had a question from him okay. um, there's a couple of questions but i th- I think this is um we, and, and we've covered some of them but is it easier to get published digitally rather than print well yeah i think so don't you yeah. um there's no yeah. cost barrier yeah first off if yeah. you've got your comic but you have in, to pay to get it printed. But I think about, we're going to reach the point where a lot of people will put your book out. Digi- even the big companies will put your book out digitally. And I know Marvel and DC have these almost only digital books that then hit trades, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, think I think, I think that's in like terms a little test. of yeah, I think um, I think what it, what he's aiming for here is, you know, people have their book and they submit to publishers um, with the hopes of getting their book in print. You know, like imaging. Uh, yeah etc right yeah um but what if you only wanted to do it digitally you know how would you then go to a you know how, what publisher yeah. could you go to about it no I, I have to say different i hear different things from different editors mm. um i hear from um certain editors um that i work with who's, who would much rather have a digital file and i've heard from someone else that i've worked with that they would rather have a physical file because they can read it on the bus on the way to work. Uh, it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it really depends approach. on the personality of who you're speaking to. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. Um, and another sort of side uh, question to that, it was actually the before the question I just asked, but I thought it was quite interesting. Does yeah. being published digitally hold the same weight with the big companies portfolio-wise? No, I don't think so. They, I really don't think so. If someone came to us and they said they had a webcomic, we'd go, right, well, that's nice and cool. But if they came to us and said they've been published by Avery Hill or they've been published by Good Comics or anyone like that, then we would... I, I personally, I can't speak for everyone, but I personally would take them more seriously. Yeah, because yeah. literally anyone could fucking make a, a webcomic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, uh, if you do no get it printed yourself, yeah, I think if you've actually got yeah. a physical product that you can say, you know, I, I self published this, you know, if, if someone was going to turn you in, you know, all, all those guys, so I'd say, I self published this, here's what lots of people said about it, and it got a bit of a buzz. Do you know what I mean? That sort mm, of thing's yeah. going to be more appealing to I, someone. I think so, and even that, I think even just a self published physical copy is more. Um, more impressive to a publisher than just a webcomic. Yeah. I'm not saying just a webcomic. That's the wrong thing to say because webcomics can be their own entity. Yeah. But I think rather than a webcomic on you – know, and let's face it, a lot of people, especially in the big companies, they like to pretend they're hip and trendy and they read webcomics, but they, they do like the physical co- product yeah. as well, I think. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's a weight to a physical product. I mean, we've seen it with the comic me and Vince had this week. There's there's a, there's a definite impact of holding it and looking at it than, that you don't quite feel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. On yeah. the flip side to that, though, would it be more impressive to go to a publisher with a web something you've released digitally yourself that has had an incredible reaction, really good reviews, and and a, a great uptake in readership? That would be. That I think, would, it's, yeah. horses. I think, I think fo- it's definitely horses. Yeah. Of course. I think it following goes a long way, doesn't it? Yeah. Because the publisher will then yeah. go, if that person's got a massive following just just on their own like that we yeah. might be able to take advantage of that when it comes to the yeah. printed. I, I think they, that does happen, and I think it really does happen. And yeah. we have heard people, we've heard from like probably some of the best writers in the industry who we've spoken to have been passed over because someone else who's not as quite a good writer but has a much bigger social media presence yeah. has been taken on. I think, I yeah, I think there's, find a that, that. there's a situation going on with that I find deeply frustrating. Me too, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. wrong, to be fair. Yeah. yeah, I want people to be there on on a meritocracy. Just yeah. how good they are at what they do. Ding, ding, That's ding. the only thing that counts. Dan Butcher's yeah. big word of the week. <laughs> 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 that has to be a thing. That has to be a soundbite we're putting in it every, every week. I love it. I love it. Um, anyway, so uh, and then we could talk about this um, for weeks on end. And I yes. think it's an uh, thing about digital. It's an ongoing discussion that will never end. Um, we probably. Ask- one more question, man. Well, because I, I just, I just want to. I think it's important for people who are producing web comics is um, the cover image. And I know it's something we've talked about before. If you're producing a book for Comic House or Comicsology, I would say the cover image needs to be of a, of a certain iconic, distinctive yeah. Yeah. feel. I think the size of a comic on a shelf in a comic shop, you're a lot closer to it, and you can see the detail. But if you're scrolling through something that it might be what an inch or two high yeah, it and needs wide, to be fucking killer. Like yeah, yeah, very, very con. Well, in my opinion, very contrasty, hard hitting. Uh, it, basically, you're looking at almost like a postage stamp. Yeah, and if you've yeah. got a hyper detailed battle scene on the postage stamp, you can't really your eyes are glaze over it. But if it's kind of very well defined, easy to spot, and very eye catching, that's what you want to go for. Yeah. yeah, and you see movie posters going for this on sites as well, where the image. Yeah, you can only look at something like the it, the it. Your poster is very distinctive and stuff like that you know hereditary or something like that that yeah. you know even no matter if you're looking at it is an inch square on a screen you know what it is it immediately is striking and you will remember it i think people got to be careful with what they're putting on their covers these days yeah yeah I, I would even suggest that perhaps look at i know it's an extra cost but doing a variant cover for the digital maybe I agree. Right. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, strip back the cover you've got and just kind of make potentially do you know what i mean just to make it stand out a bit more so um yeah I've done it. I mean, I think it's really worth. Uh, I mean, you've seen on like the streaming services, they change their covers to their films and TV series often, maybe like right. once a month, like because they get they know that people get used to seeing the same thumbnail. Oh, I don't want to watch that, so you change it, and then you think, oh, oh, it's that. And okay, you, you reconsider yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I've I've seen that, but never sort of noticed it. If you see what I mean, never yeah. taken it in. Yeah, but yeah, that's very true. Yeah. yeah. I don't think is we that something that we luxury, consider? But... Is that something we consider for comics? Then is it? Do we think we've put if we put a series on Comic House or Comicsology or whatever, we we think about refreshing the image, the icon, you know? 
Potentially. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, yeah. Think it's, I think it's worth, especially um, to get fresh eyes on it, I guess. You know, yeah, I had in a brain a brainwave earlier, but uh, since we're coming to the end of the discussion, if you paid a higher amount for a PDF for a Kickstarter <laughs> under the proviso that you could use that money off of the physical book, say uh, I had a okay. 10, 10, 10 pound book and I've like it's a four quid PDF, hmm. but if you buy the the full version, I'll give you that four quid back. Okay, so you, you, you get it for six quid. Right. I'm not sure that would be a good sales tool or not. I don't it's know like... how you'd work out the mechanics of that. Though. You mean after yeah. the Kickstarter? I get a nosebleed just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, after the after the Kickstarter's finished, so if you said right, uh, Joe Blogs, you backed this, and they get in touch, said I want uh, such a great comic, I want the physical copy, and it's like right because you've you did the Kickstarter, like we will knock off the four quid, whatever it's shipping or whatever it is that you 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 can upgrade your purchase as it were. So the the digital copy is a leader to buy the exactly physical. yeah okay it's possible it, it, look at it this Marvel in I'm not sure if they do it all the time but Marvel give away the digital code for their physical in their physical copies don't they yeah. to get yeah. people onto their app and it's kind of the same but reversed isn't mm-hmm. it you know okay yeah right let's yeah, finish first off. take a crack <laughs> <laughs> um, last I mean this is a like I say this is a topic that could go on for ages but um, yeah. But we've got to talk about some Good. great co- comics to recommend in a second. So um, let's let's finish with a, a comment from uh, Paul Moore, brilliant artist at P Moore One Two One. He just made a statement about price, which I think is quite quite good. Uh, paper comics are no longer cheap enough to attract casual buyers. My theory is to make it cheap as pos and so easy to click and read. It's not worth the hassle of looking for pirated versions and it's available everywhere so it can attract and grow a casual readership which may become loyal. Um, which is something I think we, we kind of touched on. Yeah, we did a, thing, a little bit there, during didn't we? The, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I, I think if... Um, is it easier to get a following digitally? Who knows? I mean, we're trying day on day to get a following every bloody week. When it comes to this bloody, there's show. a lot of people out there doing the same, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. This is this is for someone. Maybe we'll do a do one on on marketing one day. We'll get some somebody in from a company who deals yeah. purely. I mean, we've got two people, or well, three, if you include me, who deal with marketing at No Brow and yeah. um, and and uh, Zoe, who's kind of my boss, and she's great. She she's got a spot on. She knows exactly what suits people, what they want, mm. where to do it, that sort of thing. You know, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go, folks. Um, obviously, there's lots more to talk about, as there ha- has mm. been with all of the shows in this particular series. I can't believe we've got a series within a series. It's, it's crazy, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in over the past six weeks for these shows. They've been fun to do. Been been real good, good laugh, and we've learned something, and hopefully... Yeah, we have. Um, yeah, good learned, feedback yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like everything, as a, as, a, as a listener as well, I've I've learned stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, thanks, man. I think okay, everyone, really. no matter how long they've been in this industry, this it's just been really interesting to listen to this whole series. Yeah. So yeah, nice thank you, mate. cheers, Pete. Oh, thank you, Pete. Yeah. Um, as we say every week, we are not the experts. We are no, we are oh the no. people trying to make our own comics and our own work better. So this series was as much for us as anyone else. So because mm. we're inherently selfish. I but, think um, up in every show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so yeah thank you very much for checking out well, I mean these shows as well have given us lots of things to think about for upcoming shows so there's going to be plenty more in the future I mean as Tony said there marketing is something that we've talked about yeah. having a show about that in the future so that is that is a topic of conversation that is going to happen Yeah. Um, we're going to obviously we're going to dust ourselves off right If you, we, we've had six weeks of being semi serious certainly when it comes to the topic when it comes to the topics hopefully they've been serious and if if that was all you wanted then you could listen to that and you don't have to listen to the carry on podcasting that, that <laughs> happens before and after but next week we're, we're just going to have we're just going to blow the cobwebs off and have a um do some we've got some ideas of what we're going to talk about next week so um yeah but thank you very much for joining for joining us on this past 6 weeks it's been great fun um, and yep. we'll probably touch touch on a lot of these subjects again. And thank you to all our guests who have come on, including you, Pete. Uh, thank you to oh, everyone yeah, that joined us this week to um, talk about the different stages of the process because it's been hugely enjoyable. Um, but you now, make comics now. You got, you know, you, you got everything you need to know. Just yes. go make a comic. 
be like, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, if you if you are on the cusp of releasing your comic, you've got some knowledge that will help you going forward. So go forth. Oh, and by the way, we want to read that comic, so get in touch with us. Yeah, uh, send it to us. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, anyway, have we got any shout-outs this week, gents? I've got a couple. Yes. You want to go, Dan? I do. Uh, uh, self-serving one, first off. Uh, Vanguard's coming back. Yeah. Wednesday, the 25th of September, issue 17, covered by uh, Damien Edmondson, who's uh, work on his, his new comic, Pre-Mortis, comes out uh, any day now. So, he's got the, uh, I saw he's got the proof through, isn't he? I was yeah. Yeah. His, yeah, we follow each other. Yeah, that's no, good stuff. Him and his um, good lady wife, I think, are working on it. Yeah. Right? They, yeah, yeah, they've both done it. I've, I've only seen yeah. little bits and bobs, so I'm not quite sure of the content, but it looks kind of very much uh, horror I think a horror vein kind of comic. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's top. That. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got the uh, Leamington Spa Comic Con just around the corner, Saturday the 5th of October. Yes. <sighs> yeah. So you, Tony would be uh, stateside when we're yeah. at that one. Me and Vince yeah. would be flying the flag. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, uh, turning into a busy few months now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it could ramps up a bit at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that'd be great. There's so many creators there. You've got the Edmontons, uh, uh, Four Wagner. Wagner, yeah, loads. So yeah. Uh, come along. Yeah, we're we're yeah. going to be there. Yeah, please come along to the event. It's a great day anyway for for all the family. But but plus, you know, um, come and buy some comics from us. Come have a chat about comic books because we'll be there all day. Um, we may be sketching on the day. We'll see how it is. Um, oh yeah, yes. I like it when you two sit there sketching. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have all four print issues of awesome comics there as well. Yes. Um, which you can buy if you haven't got it yet. That you can buy the complete set for a song. So there yeah. you go. Not, not. We're not going to sing for you. Um, yeah. Do a bit well, of dance. We it's, may do. It's, may do. Issue four just popped up in Comic House. See what we think. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah go and check it out. And yes. then buy a hard copy if you like it. There you yes. go. <laughs> um, Tony, you said you had some shout-outs as well. I got a couple. Yeah. So the Spark, um, which um, I'm editing for Little Heroes. We're currently sitting at eighty-two percent. So come on, folks. We've only got, I think, 30 more days left. We could really do a getting over the line on this one. And it's for uh, a great kids' charity for Little Heroes. Um, me and Vincenzo are in it on the back page, not in, not on page three as normal. <laughs> um, we've got Monster Spotters Club. Now, if we get over the line and we hit the next um, the next stretch goal, we you will be getting li- um, Monster Spotters Club badges. So, like, ones that you can sew on your jacket. I think that's going to be brilliant, like a Cub oh, Scout. Nuts. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really nice. So, yeah, back that one. Um, Convention-wise, I'm at New York. Come and see me at the No Brow Stand at New York. We've got a little surprise, which I'm not allowed to talk about, which is going to be there. Um, and don't forget also to get your tickets for Nottingham, which yes. is nine, the 19th of October uh, at, uh, at the usual place in Nottingham. You can buy tickets either online by visiting their website or you can buy them at the Forbidden Planet in Nottingham as well as I understand it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I've just, me and Mr. Prolix have just finished our, I like to do a strip every year, not not an actual strip, but a comic strip every year for Nottingham and me and uh, Mr. Prolix have done one. The gang's got back together for this year's um, comic, so please go and buy tickets. It'll be a blast. Um, me, are you coming, D? I'm not sure. I can't remember what you said now. For which one? The uh, Nottingham. Not, uh, for, well, it depends. Uh, it's okay. a bit of a boot for me to be honest right uh, yeah isn't it you've got to get around all the way around isn't it it's, yeah uh, yeah well be me and vince if not be me vince and dan so pop along it's going to be good it's always good at nottingham we always have a blast yeah. there. Yeah. yeah 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 it's great fun they're my ones guys oh lovely awesome so there you can go. i give a shout out to one more kickstarter yeah go for it yeah uh, mondo comics presents wings of terror by uh, andrew richmond uh covered by oh, Grant yes. richards yeah yeah uh, absolutely fantastic cover on this and the link isn't working so we'll put that in the show notes and you can <laughs> check it out indeed. yourself looks right, great Will. can um, I mention a Kickstarter that's coming from the aforementioned John Wagner which is uh, Rock of the Gods the next Rock of the Reds Yay. Oh, yeah mate it looks so yeah. good which does look Are really you... good him and Dan have done an amazing Dan job Dan Cornwall yeah love Dan's work yeah so that yeah. looks very exciting coming up soon when I was at a certain comic convention we can't mention recently dan showed me some of the work from on his phone from that and it looks fucking ace i tell you yeah, it looks yeah. really good really excited about that so i'm um, yeah. looking forward to that kickstarter launching cool that's any day now isn't it as i understand yeah yeah it's pretty soon i've got the exact date with me but they've been teasing it for a while so um yeah, yeah pretty soon nice one cool amazing right now it's time of that that time of the week where we're going to recommend some comics for people so um who wants yep. to go first this week guess first sure. go on I'm going, mate. Yeah, I'm going. yeah. Guess first, go on. Yeah. What would you like to recommend, Pete? 
Well, I'm a bit biased because I just want to recommend the stuff that uh, Comic House is doing, to be honest with you. It's all right. It's all right. It's plenty um, on there, man. Um, the awesome comics uh, got like, <laughs> issue four. I don't know if you're aware of this. One. <laughs> oh, I've heard of it. Tell us more. Well, yeah. worth checking that out on the comics show just now, and I've missed that really. But um, we're going to be at um, Thought Bubble. Me and Steve Horry. Oh, nice. Ah, oh, cool. Dead uh, Men, uh, City of Lost Souls, Catalyst, Thirty Two Kills, Close, and we've got issue twelve of Comic House launching as well, which is uh, very exciting. Ah, oh, awesome. So, oh, nice. um, but reckon. I just like everyone to check out Lizard Men on the Comic House website uh, yeah. and the Comic House because it's a, it's a beautiful series. I've really been enjoy really enjoyed being uh, involved with all that. So um, stuff, man. that's my yeah. recommends, but it's very um, very biased. I'm afraid. I do apologise. That that book, Steve, that Lizard Men, it, is, it reminds me of like Golden Age um, Vertigo. It's, it's that sort of quality yeah. to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah really. Good yeah, story totally. It's, um, yeah. it's it's. That he'll be really pleased to hear that because um, the, the team that's worked on that has just been just been fabulous. They're a dream to work with, and they've uh, they've produced a really beautiful story. So um, yeah, that's my recommends, and <laughs> I just feel really embarrassed about recommending some nice. of my own ones. But hey, no. whatever. No, no, son. no. <laughs> yeah, people need to check check these comics out. Yeah, uh, who wants to go next? Well, okay, okay. Well, you can go. You can Thank you. It. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Road of Bones. I read this week. I read the first issue, written by Rich Dueck, who you might have seen. He's done some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuffs over at IDW. Yeah. Um, are and a cover by Alex Cormack. This is um, the cover that I think I um, saw once. The cover's absolutely amazing. Yeah, now Alex, you probably know him from he did Sync with John Leese. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, letters by Justin Birch, edited by Bobby Corral. Uh, from IDW, um, the story is it's 1953. We're in a Siberian gulag um, called of, of, of a, in a place called Colma, um, and it's just like I see just hell. Do you know what I mean? Like you can imagine the worst Russian prison. Do you know what I mean? And this is like outside, and they're digging in the sort of the frozen ground, and they're starving. Um, and unsurprisingly, a couple of the prisoners um, grasp the opportunity to escape. But one of the prisoners is called Roman, and um, this is where, I, I, to be fair, I picked this up because of um, Sarah from TKO, because it's um, I don't know, just something about the sort of the side of the sort of Russian history that I'm I'm, I'm interested in at the moment, you know, and uh, you don't see enough of it really. Um, you know, you can read War and Peace, but it's quite boring, so I decided to read a comic instead. Yeah. Um, and it's a, this is just a four issue miniseries, so I thought I'll pick this up and have a look at it, and I love Sarah so much. This book is just fuck, absolutely fucking brutal. Um, men on a chain gang. And they're digging in the hard earth and they're just like one of them is just indiscriminately killed by one of the guards and it's just life is cheap kind of stuff. But there's a there's a little twist in it. There's um, there's a character called Roman who has part of his job is working in the kitchen and you catch him handing over a little bit of bread underneath a fence. He's caught by one of the guards and really badly beaten. Um, and he said, you know, and and you, um, at the time you think is there, is it a female prisoner? Is it an animal? Is it, you know, and you don't really find out what it is until a little bit later. Um, the, it's just full of sort of the, the art's gorgeous, but it's just history and mood and hardship. And um, then you get introduced to Russian folklore. So you realize he's actually feeding a sort of this sort of spiritual creature that lives beyond the fence and in he 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 re he remembers from his dreams and stuff like, like that and you get a real it's, it really changes the way you look at it you know um you, you find out that he's actually been um he's got 25 years because he's made a joke about stalin so he's been sent to prison for 25 years um and you find out that the creature he is um feeding is a demorvic which is a fairy creature who in um, Russian folklore guards over you when you're in danger sort of thing. Um, it's not. And you find that out towards the end of the book, you find out what the truth of this sort of, if it is a creature and what kind of creature it is. Um, but there's, there's a moment. So the, the majority of the first issue, the first two thirds are in um, this sort of very dark and grubby and muddy and dirty um, prison camp, a bit like in the great escape where they live in the huts, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and there's a sort of fiery kitchen and it's just it's it's a, it's a mixture of dirt and blood 
basically. So the, the grubbiness and just the blood splashed everywhere when people are being beaten up and killed. Um, it's a little bit like the 30 days a night feeling to it, to a certain extent. It just sort of feels a bit like that sort of darkness. And then the second third, the, the last third of it is no spoilers because it's four issue in this series. It's the only first issue, but they escape and they're, they're, they're sort of trekking across the, 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 they open up the, the page. So you get the whole top of a page is just this beautiful view of snow in the mountains and they're trekking through the deep snow and it just becomes really beautiful, really, really impressive. Um, and, and, and genuinely just, I thought, oh, I'm in for one ear. This is going to be like a prison drama. And suddenly you're just out in the middle of this sort of incredibly dangerous nature. And it, but it is like incredibly beautiful as well. Um, really, really, really good stuff. Um, I'm going to probably read the next three tomorrow. I suggest I only read, I, I stopped off at the services on the way back from working today and read this issue. And this was so taken by it. I was, you know, I don't know what you guys like, but occasionally we, we read stuff. And we think I'll review that this week and I put it aside. And then when I get to it, I think, Nah, I can't really talk about that one. It's not very good. Yeah. And I was sort of desperately looking through comicsology and comic apps <laughs> trying to find something that really sort of, you know, took caught my eye. And, and I came across this. I think Paul Dunn in um, Orbital mentioned it to me the other day, mentioned the artist as being a pal of his. And um, it suddenly occurred to me that not only is it about Russian history, which I'm, I'm quite interested in, mm. but it's got this sort of art style that's incredibly... Um, there's a Sean Phillips edge to it, but much more of a sort of raw, instinctual kind of side to it where it's it's less coherent in a good way if you know what i mean um it's rougher edged and nothing no lines are closed and you know it's that sort of thing going on and i just it, yeah. the, the the color is the they use a couple of pages there's, there's a reveal right at the end which has got unsurprisingly i won't spoil it but it's unsurprisingly it's got like a, a a red wash to it which works so well um yeah so i mean everyone knows idw idw publishing.com or just find them on comiXology there is a trade coming i don't think the trade's out quite yet but uh, it's really worth looking at have a look for it so it's called road of bones there you go nice my one dan cool. do you want to go next Good. yeah my one's uh well you guys know what i'm going to talk about it's the, the hall chronicles <laughs> oh yeah oh, uh, thank you mate tony yeah, sent me a copy yes. during the week uh is tired of the old cliches of glamorous working girls. This is a comic that tells the stories in their own words. Written by Tony Esmond, with art by Vince Hunt, Rachel Ball, Sarah uh, Harris, Tom Curry, Rick Jackson, Charles Raymond, and Stuart Mulvane. Warning, very strong content. Uh, it's fantastic <laughs> read. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about it, Tony? Um, is that the best way? Yeah, if you want. So the history of it is um, our friend Sarah... Um, a bell rings every time we mention Sarah's name on this show. <laughs> yeah. um, she was like uh, Sarah, Sarah's a huge comics fan, isn't she? You know, and and one one of our favourite people. And she said, "Did you, you know? Do you want to sort of fancy collaborating on something? Write me something. I've just fancy." She's always done art. She's mm. more of a sort of prone to sort of multimedia, perhaps a sort of graffiti kind of side of things. She said, "Do you fancy writing me something?" And I wrote her something, and um, we played about with it. We extended it by a page, which is down completely down to Sarah, um, and we wrote this story about one of the back characters in um, Cockney Kung Fu, who's a prostitute called Peggy, who has a couple of lines in the first issue of awesome comics anthology. And I decided to um, elaborate on her life somewhat. Um, it's just interesting that, you know, the back characters in these stories, they never yeah. get it, but we decided to sort of elaborate on quite a few of them. And she was one of them. Uh, there's another character who appears in it. Who's a guy called um, small Sydney small, who's who also appears in the first issue uh, in one of the prose stories in this. And so I wrote, I wrote, that for her and it was so utterly gorgeous and what she did with it was and i'm love i'm loving the fact that people are really digging well they're digging all of it do you know what i mean but they're, mm. they they're really digging sarah i mean there's the opens with peggy in bed and sarah's used material as the bed cover and stuff like that and it's it's uh, you know outstanding it's mind-blowingly good and much better than uh, even you know you imagine stuff when you write it in your brain yeah. you know, sort of, yeah and this is really good and and it, and it, she, she sent it through to me and as she was creating it i thought where, where am I going to, what am I going to do with this? Um, how am I going to get this out? Because it's only a five pager. What, what, how do I get this out to people? You know, I didn't want to just put it on my blog or anything. You know, I wanted it to be a coherent volume of stories. So I'd written a couple of text pieces for the mailer, the Cockney Kung Fu mailer, which I, I rewrote one of them and I used, I used two of them in, in the, in the book. And I've I've come across these girls. Uh, allow me just to say, through a working experience, who are you know not in yeah. any other way, but um, and I just got tired of the cliche of um, 
the working girl in movies and TV and, and even in, in, in comics. And, and they're, dis, they're described as either super glamorous sort of strippers, you know, or just like like heroin addled, yeah. you know, just decrepit, you know, looking 20 years older than they are. And there, there's space for that. That does happen. But there's there's the gambit between them of everyone. And, mm. you know, and, and um, I wanted to write some stuff that had a real reality to it. And it struck me that the only way you get these people to tell their stories is by getting them to tell their stories. So um, I'd actually written a couple of them as scripts. So a couple of the stories that they they so we, we did it as a, um, a way that someone talks to a, a film crew. Um, and I'd written a couple of this, them as actual sequential stories, right? But I thought, no, this, the, I want them to tell their story. So I'm going to have them tell their story rather than, you know, so they just sit there and they tell their story to an unseen film crew who you see in the, the last, one of the last pinups, which is drawn by Stuart. And I think that really, really works. That little reveal, which we put at the back, didn't we V? Mm, yeah. Um, so we got, I approached um, some, just some creators who I thought would suit the, the work. Um, Rachel Ball will love, love Rachel, always loved Rachel's work. And I'm hoping we're going to do something more. Um, Sarah did a story. Charles H. Raymond did a story. Rick Jackson and Tom Curry. Um, we've got a pinup by Stuart Moreno, a pinup by Vince, who um, even just outdid himself with the disgustingness. Uh, of it's the... absolutely haunting. That <laughs> <pinup>. <laughs> it's really haunting. I mean, like, tonally the book shifts so much through the comic like from one moment it's comic next minute it's kind of tragic and then the short stories and then that one like the end bit we get to reveal the crew and then on to that vince run it's like a, a punch in the face it's really it's almost like that's when the crew have left that's one of them you know yeah. that's the and we called it uh, i think me and vince talked about it and we called it reality sucks which <laughs> yeah. still makes me chuckle that's what we called it but uh that outstanding and i think you said you put the red wash over it didn't you yeah is that the idea yeah. yeah um the other thing is the cover um vince vince's idea completely to have the videotape um which just works so well and like yeah. we we're talking about earlier about distinctive you know iconic covers and i love i love that one um yeah, so it came to the point where we'd all everything was done. I thought, well, we're gonna let's put this out. So we sort of did it on matte, a matte finished paper, um, and stuck it out on digital, and then it came through physically from Mixum. Mm. Funny enough, with last week's guest, the um, two days later. So it's my everything's first been ever editing credit as well. I've never been yeah. called yeah, yeah, yeah. an editor before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's kind of uh, a very, very refer- like a refreshing read. It's yeah. very different and, uh, yeah, very well done to everyone involved and Thank yourself, you. very much yourself, Tony. Thank you. I just wanted some, some reality. I mean, it is, it is gross. You're right. There is, there's, um, yeah. you know, there are some really gross I, moments. I can, I can speak to everyone else that was involved in it saying, um, we're very proud to be part of this. Yeah. Comment. And we've got a little, um, DM group, haven't we? And it's like, we like, it's everyone's like steel chang on it now. Yeah. You know, it's really nice to be involved in, you know, everyone's like been really positive about it. So, yeah. Yeah. so, um, yeah. Where, where's that going to be available, Tony? That's, that's available. Uh, now. yeah. Never on anything. Big com. Look at that. Oh. In fact, I impressed you both by, cause I sent it off to print and I created a big cartel store in one morning and even Vince went fucking hell. How'd you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> He became <laughs> legit in a couple of hours. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Easy as that. I don't know about that, but yeah, thanks, Dan. I appreciate it, man. And um, I, I'm, I, I purposely haven't sent it. There's a famous quote. I can't remember the name of the the um, the, uh, the the philosopher, but it was um, the worst thing in the world is is watching stupid people enjoy themselves. And so I've only sent it to people who I think have actually got a valuable comment to make. <laughs> comics, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, there's a few sites out there. Let's not mention them, shall we? Let's let's not sing their yeah. praises or sing in any way. But they, I haven't sent them out to them, so. Uh, but um, the people who have understood it, I appreciate it, and I'm and I'm really pleased that people have understood what we did. And if you go to Beyond the Streets, which is a charity, you'll find them online. Um, mm. And if you want to drop some money off, drop some money off with them, and they look after girls who've um, yes. been smuggled or they, they've been mistreated uh, as, as working as a prostitute. And it's, it's a great little charity. So go to that. Yes. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. So um, yeah, my uh, my recommendation this week is going to be short and sharp. Um, especially after that, I mean, how can you how can you follow that? Up? You can't follow that up, <laughs> um, really. Um, although you should buy it, everyone, because uh, the printed copy looks bloody lovely as well. Uh, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, well pleased. <laughs> yeah, it's coming really, really, really well. Down to your design, babes. That's what it's all about. Well, no, I, look, I I only did a little. I only, I didn't do much. It's everyone else that's made it amazing. I, you know, 
So there you go. Um, yeah. So this this week I was having to move around in the house, and um, so I had to empty some sh- some bookshelves. Um, I'm going to go back to the well of of the bookshelf this week to do a quick recommendation for for an indie book that I think was completely overlooked um, at the time. It's completely forgotten now. So much so that I can't find it on Comixology and I can't, I can't find it on, on Amazon or something like that. But I remember picking it up, um, I think it was um, early 2000s or something like that. Uh, it's a book by Brian J. L. Glass, who went on to do Mice Templar, oh, and yeah. uh, Michael Avon Oming, who everyone will know okay. from Powers. And this is he's the doing f- some great Dick Tracy at the moment. Like, yeah. really oh, good he's stuff. an amazing yeah. artist, yeah. yeah. Um, and this was a book called Ship of Fools. Did you ever hear okay. about this one? Did Maybe. Any- no. no. It was um, put out by Calibre back in the day. Uh, 96 uh, okay. actually was when it first came out, actually. Um, and th- looking at... And I came across this. I, I, I remember I, p- I found a trade paperback of it at... I, I think it was at Nottingham Comic Con or something, you know, through, through one of those graphic novel bin dives, and I, th- I found it and just thought, God, I really enjoyed that series. I only had like one or two issues of it, because as we all know, getting indies back in the day was, especially American indies, was quite hard to do. Um, I think I ordered it through previews at the time. That was the only reason oh, okay. I managed to get hold of it. I think it had a Dave Johnson cover, um, one of the issues. Um, so, so I read a couple of issues, and it's crazy. It's basically a bunch of about a bunch of sort of notorious galactic criminals um, who sort of they're all insane though. They're all a bit mad, and it's I I, I can't really describe to you the story. Um, it doesn't finish because they only managed to do I think, I think you said ten ten issues over, oh, okay. over the run right. because it went from Caliber and then Image picked it up. And this was Image back, back in like the. 2000 so not the image we know now as no. should we yeah. say um so they were they were shouting into the void of independent comics when not so many people were hearing anyway um so unfortunately this this series didn't get the the love it deserved at the time um but i have a, i have a real fondness of it and i just found it on the shelf i thought oh, you know when you forget you have a book and then you you open up a couple of pages and then you you reinvigorate and just thought oh god this was so good um mm. It's worth it alone for Oming's artwork, um, which I think I preferred his artwork. You can see where he, the journey he's going to where he's going to be like when he does powers, etc. But yeah. he had a bit more detail at, the, at this point. Um, there's a bit more going on, um, and I, I prefer the stuff in Ship of Falls. That's me personally. But then again, I haven't followed his career too much afterwards. Um, it's a black and white book. And I think for all of those people that love 2000 AD, this, this is the sort of story that would have been tailor-made for 2000 AD. Okay. Um, you've got insane characters. Um, one of the characters in it is uh, Jim Morrison, who um, faked his death, and he's living in the future now. And there's an, <laughs> there's an alien planet where lots of people look like Elvis or like and Hendrix and things <laughs> things like that. Um it's trippy. I think you'll enjoy it, Tony, because it's it's yeah. mental. Um one oh, of nice. the, yeah, yeah, there's a small group um called one of them's uh, the, the figurehead is called Marla. She's like a gun toting psychopath. There's Darius who's a people believe that um he's a cannibal who ate his own family. So there was lots of mysteries played <laughs> out. But in this um I've got this volume volume one Death and Taxes I can't, yeah, I can't remember where I got it from now. This was published by Slave Labour back in the day. And at the okay. back, which I didn't notice at the time, there's a big letter from uh, Brian Glass just sort of saying, you know, it, it, it's sort of lamenting the fact that this this book didn't go on to, you know, it was it was sort of lost and they had so much more to tell. But thank you very much for picking up this book. Because um, I, th- I think when, when a story like this and you put so much into it and you've planned a 50-issue arc, and then it dies. Um, you, you, you naturally just go feel. Doesn't anyone care? Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so that in itself, the the letter at the back was quite interesting to read. So if if you see Ship of Fools, um, Michael Avon Oming, Brian Jail Glass, if you see it at any conventions, then then please check it out. Um, the book I've got's got a David Mack cover, which I think does nothing for the book itself. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Um because it's so startlingly different, you mean? Yeah, it's so completely different. Yeah. It, mm. yeah. It's it's all very much watercolour. But this is um yeah, I, I, I loved it. I'm gonna I'm gonna reread it properly again, but I remember reading it before and just thinking, bloody hell, this is an L S D trip. 
with guns. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, cool. So so keep an eye out for that one. Um, yeah. So there you go, folks. Another one in the bag. Nice. Um, hopefully, stuff has been learned. And uh, yeah, you go forth and uh, check out loads more comics this week. Um, I think I think we've done all right the past couple of weeks. Yeah, we? I reckon so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, if you, if there's anything that we mentioned in the show, my cat's wandering around in the background and he's just distracted. I did hear me the meow. Said, yeah, did you hear the meow? Could you hear yeah, the meow? Loud. <laughs> Bobby, that was you, Joe. You were actually you were actually on the show, Bobby. Bless him. Um, that's the first time my cat's ever been on this show, um, so he'll probably ask <laughs> for a return guest spot at some point in the future. Yeah. But anyway, our most was, popular guest probably. Yeah, if you want, if you want to get in touch with us and let us know that you'd actually prefer to have a cat on this show rather than us, then there's several different ways you can get in touch with us. I thought you were going to say Tony there. I thought you were going with Tony. No, no I'd never Tony replace you. I'd never replace Don't you. Don't break my heart. Don't break my heart. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail dot com. Uh, to get in touch, uh, like I say, we'll be we'll be announcing uh, what we're going to talk about in the next couple of shows in several different w- ways. We'll, we'll announce it on the Twitter at Awesome Pod. Go there and follow us. Well, we'll we'll be um, spouting nonsense, retweeting great kickstarters you should check out, and more. Um, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Awesome Comics Podcast. And uh, if you like doing, getting involved in talking about comics without any hard sell, without anything, and just loving the medium, then join the group Awesome Comics Talk on their Facebook groups, um, which there's always great chat going on there. I forgot to post the episode this week, didn't I, Dan? Oh, I saw that. I only remembered that you hadn't when you did it. <laughs> I thought I thought I had. So um, yeah, yeah, someone, uh, Kieran, got in touch and said, you haven't posted the episode. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh. And I was like, oh, shit, yeah, we haven't. Bloody hell. <laughs> so, uh, but people were sharing it anyway. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, cool. Yeah. 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 So we'll post the episode on the thread. So if there's anything from this episode that you want to talk more about, there'll be a thread on the Facebook pages to go go and yes. follow that more. So uh, we had uh, Rob from the last episode, like when I talked about his comic, he got on, got involved. Yes. Yeah, it was good, sensible conversation, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Stuff. Fantastic stuff. That's what we're all about here. So a sensible conversation with creators and publishers and stuff. We're just. Not between each other. No. That would be ridiculous. No. And thank you for listening to us, whether it was on the website, awesomecomics.podbean.com. I still can't believe my my cat distracted me. I'm never normally distracted. Yeah, you went a bit weird there. I thought, I oh, know what's happened. Uh, yeah. I, I was... <laughs> normally, I, ha- I have to worry about you distracting me, Tony. <laughs> and now I've been sabotaged. Rename um, your cat Tony, and then you can shout, Tony, no, that, get your head out of the toilet. That'd just be yeah. confusing. Well, I say Tony, that to you anyway. Stop looking your nuts. Yeah. Oh, well, I say that to him anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you listen to us on iTunes, please like, subscribe, leave a review. We have, uh, uh, have we had one recently? No, not for a few. No, yeah, go on, really. give us a review. Go yeah. on, go on. Yeah. Dan, Dan, well, what will you do for people if you if they leave a nice review, Dan? Uh, uh, once you do That's your dance, I'll do mine. So there you go. <laughs> There's something you'll never get. Um, so. <laughs> But, I'm um, literally going to go on Twitter and go, Stacey Vince owes you a dance, owes you a dance, owes you. <laughs> Shut up. Um, me, and, me and Dan might dance together at Leamington. There's a reason no. to go. Oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> if there's something like that happens, someone will video it. You know our luck. Yeah. Um, but if you listen to us on any of the networks, such as Stitcher, Podnose, Podknife, what are the networks we on, Tony? We're also on Pod, Digby, the world's biggest dog. Hey. <laughs> nice. Never actually watched yeah. that. No, I me neither. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> well, you know it's bad if Tony Esmond said, "Don't, don't watch it." Don't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, where can people find us online, etc.? Tony, uh, never write anything. Dot bigcartel. Dot com. Big business. That's me all over. Um, uh, or S-O-S, E-Z-O-H-Y-Z on Twitter. Brilliant, Dan. You can find me uh, on Twitter at Vanguard Comic, and you can read read Vanguard at VanguardComic. Dot com. Yeah. Nice. Issue seventeen you, you, starts. You're gonna wins, have to pick up the winter. pace, Dan, because you're, yeah. getting, you're getting back on the Vanguard train. So come on, boy, come on. Yeah, yeah. I've got a fucking uh, a buffer, which is so rare for me. Oh, Tony, yeah. do I need to ask you what that is? It's good buffing. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> word! Check out his Instagram for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as for Instagram and Twitter, you can find me on there at Jester Diablo, and you can find out more about my comic at the Red Mask from Mars dot com. Pete, thank you once again for joining us, for being a return yeah, thanks, guest. Pete. It's good. Always a pleasure, man. Yeah. Thanks for 
for having me on, lads. It's uh, been great to talk to you again. Yes. Where can people find uh, you and your lovely service? Pardon? You know what I mean. Uh, comicoast.com or comicoast.com stroke app is where nice. we're at. Nice. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a reason we talk about it every week, folks, because we do actually believe in it. Yeah, we really uh, do. Yeah. yeah, there's some great stuff on there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll talk I, about I be- just want to create a beautiful archive of indie comics, and uh, the more the merrier. So uh, come and have a look if you're interested. Yes, nice one. There you go. Get your Good comic stuff. on there. Get, yeah. get it on there. Get it on there, and and go forth and enjoy your week, folks. I'm going to go off and give uh, all my pets a big cuddle now, because <laughs> I'm a big softie. <laughs> I'm going to go and give myself a good buffing. Yeah. Well, well, Dan's got a buffer, so perhaps Dan can oh, buff yeah. you. Yeah, drop your buffer off. Not that type of buffer. Oh. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> to be continued. Did you just become Kenneth Williams then? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I was going to try and do the what? laugh, but I'm not. No. What should I do, Vince? If uh, if what? What? No. Oh. What? Why is it quiet? Why is it quiet? <laughs> what happened? I thought my internet had gone down. <laughs> It's gone off the rails, so it's time to say to everyone, have a brilliant week, read loads of comics, and don't worry, we'll actually know what we're doing next week. No, we won't. But until then, have a brilliant week, and from everyone on the show, what do they do, Dan? He's done it on purpose. He has done it on purpose. (laughs) And this is what he gets for it. So have a brilliant week, and what do they do, Tony? Stay awesome. (laughs) I thought you were going to let me down then. If that was the case, if that was the case, then no one, no one gets to say it. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.